They do play in basketball, by the way. Last year, Cincinnati was here and won, and they will meet in Cincinnati this coming season on January the 4th. Bearcats with an outstanding basketball team. Now let's play some football here. Tennessee will be kicking off, and the Bearcats will be receiving. That's different, Bob. Nobody deferred the decision. That they actually is. took it. Quite unusual. <laughs> Cradell Kimbrough is the chief threat on the kick returns for the Cincinnati Bearcats. As Ted told you, a couple of their offensive weapons are missing. Bryant with a stress fracture in the leg, a wide receiver. And Pierce, the number one wide receiver, is out for breaking some team rules. He will be back later, but he is being disciplined and held out of this ball game. Bryant, by the way, with a stress fracture, is expected to return to the Bearcats lineup in a couple of more weeks. Tennessee with a nicked up and bruised tailbacks, but otherwise in pretty good shape. Here's the kick, and it's a nice one all the way down to the one-yard line. The Bearcats come out across the 15 and drop short of the 20, and flags fly immediately. Well, we've got two penalties. We've got Tennessee offsides and probably a legal block by Cincinnati, so this one might come back. The first flag fell back here where Tennessee kicked off and probably had some blocking violation on the kickoff so you're probably right Condridge offsetting penalties here crowd will no doubt exceed 90,000 today and they brought those orange ponchos today they're ready for this one Condridge well they offside the kicking team illegal block in the back by the receiving team penalties offset will kick off again offsetting penalties as you heard from the referee Al Ford the umpire is Nathaniel Anderson, the linesman Robert Towns, line judge Robert Caldwell, side judge John Buoni, the field judge is Don Shanks, back judge is Michael New. So Tennessee will kick it off once again. Pretty good coverage on that one, Condridge. Uh, they've had very decent coverage uh, in most of their games. Well, what they're doing is trying to disguise a little bit and make it so you can't count numbers. And uh, they just got a little bit excited and ran off sides that time. But... Uh, Maybe they'll time it better this time. Uh, talking about the orange ponchos, if they didn't learn a lesson last week about the rain, you'll never learn it. So that's why they're here. All right, there's the kick by Chapman. It bounces. Going to be kind of hard to handle, perhaps. Taken by Brian Jenkins. He's got a lane. Look out. He's to midfield almost. And a touchdown saving tackle was made at that point. 46 yards on the return. So a big play right there. And it was a big play such as that that really put him in the Penn State game earlier this year. Condrick? This is just excellent blocking. There's a hole. The hole's so big, they're waving everybody to come through. Joey Chapman made a good play right there to just slow up the runner so he could be tackled. But that was a great cover. John, Great kickoff return. John Summers then on the tackle also. So Cincinnati set up in very good field position. Lance Harp, big quarterback, almost built like a tight end. At six foot three, weighs around 220 pounds plus, hands off deep to his tailback. It's across the line of scrimmage into Tennessee territory down around the 44 yard line. Take a look at the Bearcat offense as they line up for this one the backs and receivers the key man being the tailback David Small who's going to get a lot of work today as he did right there on that play and on the line Jim Carmen heads a very solid and a very big line Lance Harp is your quarterback 222 pounder and he brings them up to the line of scrimmage that's small number three who may wind up carrying the ball today Condridge 30 times Here's his second carry, and it's a big hole, gaping hole, down into Tennessee territory to the 30-yard line. Well, I tell you, they're, so far I've been watching how they're blocking Todd Kelly, and what they're doing is trying to set up plays and countering away from him. Play covered 15 yards as you take a look at it there, and uh, Condridge, there's the, the blocking on the line. Well, he looked like an ISO towards Kelly, and then they break it back to the other side of the line, which... Uh, it's really playing right into the hands of what they want to do. They're run, cutting back on the defense. They're, if you over-pursue over their offense, they're going to cut back on you. David Small last season rushed for over 1,000 yards, 1,004 to be exact. As the play is incomplete, they're intended for Albert Sweet. And let's set the Tennessee defense for you here early in this ball game with no score. Wilson, Tullis, Surlis, and Kelly. 
Jeff, tell us uh, the veteran on that line or one of the veterans had a great uh, year so far. Jeff has played extremely well. All of them have, for that matter. Todd Kelly, you know about how well he has played. All right, the Bearcats are up to the line now. Looking at a second down situation. Lance Harp spreads them out. Receivers split on each side. Tennessee linebackers jump. They want to come on a blitz. He throws over the middle. It's complete, I believe. Yes, the official rules that he did catch it. Tennessee thought he trapped it. They're a little bit upset about it, but uh, the reception will stand. Harp made a great read on the blitz. It's just a great little blitz read by Harp, and that's just a completion. That's uh, that's what that's what you when you blitz somebody, you're going to have that trouble. If you don't cover the the blitz hot guy. McCleskey and uh, Parker coming up from the safeties, but not quite in time. All right, Cincinnati, third down. And no more than three to go for a first. Here's a handoff to Small. They got him trapped. George Kidd and Fabio Henson came up and beautiful support on that one, Condridge. Well, George Kidd stayed at home. He, he didn't over-pursue. If you'll take a look, George Kidd stayed at home, did not over-pursue, and did not get blocked down. And then Tavio Henson just comes up and uh, finishes off the tackle. So it sets up a field goal, and we're going to have uh, an attempt here. The kick is up, and it is no good. Brian Whitlow missed it. It was Zavko instead of Whitlow at the last second. They brought in the number two kicker, Zavko, who may have a little more leg strength. He's 185 pounder, about 15 pounds heavier than Whitlow, maybe a little more strength. And he missed it. So Condridge, Tennessee, dodges a bullet there. They surely did. And uh, usually that's one of the drawbacks of being offside on a kickoff. Uh, that second time you run down there, there's usually bad things going to happen. And, and Tennessee overcame it this, this one instance. Big defensive play by Kidd and Tavio Henson, the turning point perhaps in that drive. Here's Heath Schuler. There you see his numbers on the year. Extremely impressive young man. He can throw and he can run. Three touchdowns, a couple of interceptions he's thrown, but 57% completion. Remember he played last week's game, second half in a driving rain and threw only nine times. Turns, fakes a handoff, throws out in the flat, incomplete to Bronson. Mario Brunson just simply dropped it. He was going to turn up field, I believe, Condridge, uh, and forgot the football. Well, it's just a case of not uh, concentrating, catching the ball. And if you stop and remember about last week, that's the exact same play most Phillips scored on. His little flood pattern, bootleg to the field, and uh, he was wide open. Just got to catch the ball before you run. Ryan Spivey at center. He has been banged up a little bit. We may see some other players at center. May even see Lehman playing some center before the game is over. Here's Schuler throwing out in the flat once again. Got a man out there and not quite a first down though. Run out of bounds around the 46 yard line. That was Kendrick Jones taking a look at the Tennessee backs and receivers. Todd Fleming, Faulkner Phillips and Mario Brunson the big fullback who's having a good year. On the offensive line Miller, Spivey, Smith, Gordon and the veteran Mike Stuhl. Those two guards have played extremely well, and there's your quarterback, 6'3", 208, Heath Schuler, out of Bryson City, North Carolina. Tennessee needs a couple of yards for the first, and Schuler's going to roll. He was open for the run, but he threw to Kendrick Jones and hit him up around the 45-yard line for the first down. I tell you, Heath just had, go ahead. Heath just adds so much to the offense. This is just a little sprint out, which is something that Tennessee can do now without having the bootleg. And just on the run, he fires the, the great hook pass in there, and it's just a completion. The play before, we, he threw a screen pass to the wide side of the field, which is something that hadn't been in the Tennessee repertoire for quite a while. Scott Brown, a linebacker, had to make the tackle on that last play as he was dropping in the coverage. Here is Schuler firing. Look at that arm to Kendrick Jones down to the 42-yard line. That's what you call strength, Conrich. <laughs> that was a rope. That one went right in. Nice little play action pass here, but if you'll watch, the secondary, the so strong safety has to make a decision. He's either going to cover the flat or cover the hook. He made a decision to cover the flat. He goes to the hook. Kendrick Jones making himself uh, well known here early in the ball game. Sophomore, 5'8, 183. 
Came to Tennessee with good credentials and looking good early in this drive. Here's Schuler standing up, firing to the sidelines, complete and out of bounds. Corey Fleming was the receiver. Take a look at the defensive line for the Bearcats. Ronnie Dixon is a good one. You'll hear his name today often. And the linebackers very active, led by Nate Dingle. And then the backfield, Jocelyn Vorgella heads up the very active defensive secondary. Those guys will come up and hit you, too. Both the safeties are uh, big guys in the 200-pound range. Here's the option left. They pitch it out. Here's Bose Phillips down to the 20-yard line and out of bounds. Big Mose Phillips, who started the season as a tailback and fullback, playing more fullback than tailback, up to 220 pounds, but uh, looking good, Condridge. This play is made by the quarterback isolating the, the defensive end. Once you get him in that situation, two great blocks downfield, and Mose just carries the mail after that. That was just a greatly executed play. Covers 17 yards. It's good for a first down. First down and 10 to go for the Vols at the 20-yard line. Schuler has Brunson and Phillips behind him. Turns, gives to his second man through, Mose Phillips, and nothing. This time it is played beautifully by Reggie Hudson, outside linebacker for the Bearcats. Waiting for that one all the way. Well, Condridge, you were right when we started the game. You said you thought Tennessee would throw a little bit more, and they came out gunning in that... Uh, in the first drive here. Well, that's what you have to do against a very physical team. Uh, you can't just play to their strength right off the bat. You got to make them do some other things first, and then you'll try to attack them one on one. At the top of your screen is Faulkner and Jones. Schuler's looking that way, firing, had the man wide open, Faulkner, and just uh, a little too wide and high for him. He was there, and Schuler knew it. That could have been six. Again, that one was well executed. It was uh, just a hook pattern, which is designed to, to get inside of the zone and make an isolation on the strong safety. If the strong safety goes to the flat, you hit the hook. If he stays in and covers the hook, you hit the flat. So Philip Fulmer there looking at the ninth play of the drive coming up here. Definitely a passing situation. Schuler in the pocket. Look at it. It's wide open. He breaks it down to the 10, inside the 10, all the way down to the seven-yard line. That's the dimension that Heath Schuler brings to the Tennessee offense, which will remind many people of the days that the gentleman sitting to my right played, Condridge Holloway. Let's take a look at it, Condridge. This is a good read, he, and one thing that Heath knows, and he's done it enough times, when you drop back, the, the open hole is usually to your backside and to the left. And when you conduct through that hole and the defensive end doesn't stay home, it's a lot of running lane in there. Covered 14 yards, a little bit closer to the eight. Call it first down and goal at the eight-yard line. Schuler may be changing the play. He hands off to Phillips. Big hole inside the five down to the four-yard line goes Mose Phillips. That was an audible, and it was a, it was a good one, too. They, they were designed to go outside of the tackles, and they overloaded just by one man and when you count that many men in the box you audibleize to the inside of the defense Jason Coppas made the stop there Cincinnati defensive staff calling the signals from the sidelines trying to figure out how to stop the balls they pull that ball a little bit back closer perhaps to the five yard line where Mose Phillips went down Schuler spins on the option touchdown he's Schuler. Heath Schuler now with three touchdowns passing and five rushing on the year. That run will cover five yards, so very similar to one of the plays that he scored on last week, uh, Condridge. Now Bexford, who has not missed an extra point or a field goal this year, sets it through the uprights, and the Volunteers go on top here and. Knoxville by a score of 7 to nothing in the first quarter with 8.49 remaining in the first quarter of play. Glad to have you with us today across the state of Tennessee and those of you watching in Cincinnati. There you see the story. Very impressive drive, Condridge, on that one for Tennessee and for Schuler and his receivers and obviously for the offensive line. Sure was. Here's just the counter option. He keeps it down the line. They decide to take the pitch man. 
Mario Brunson makes a great kick out, and it's just a walk it into the end zone. Beautiful block by number 44. Mario Brunson did a great job right there. That's all you need to do. And then when he has that much room in that shorter distance, it's, uh, it's pretty much a positive play. But one thing I noticed on this, the last two plays that we mentioned earlier in the game, that the defensive linemen for Cincinnati are already on, holding on to their knees. They're having to rush that passer up and back, and they're used to maybe just somebody trying to play tough football with them, and they can defense the run. Now they're having to chase a sprint-out passer and a drop-back passer, and it caused them a little bit of strength. In that drive, Heath Schuler was four of six for 38 yards. There you see the scoring drive, 11 plays, covering 74, took 333 capped by the five yard run by Heath Schuler. He had 18 yards rushing himself in that drive. He does not on the uh, option Condrich show a whole lot of desire to pitch out. He's going to keep it when the hole is there. I think always that'll come. I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> this one will bounce all the way into the end zone. The Bearcats cannot handle that. And so they will bring it out to the 20. Now let's go down to the sideline and Ted Hall. Ted. Robin Codrich and Tennessee defensive players talk about the fact they've never faced an offense like this, the kind that just tries to muscle you and beat the tar out of you. You saw them rip off a couple of big runs. I talked to some of the defensive players to see if they've done any surprises, if the Cincinnati offense had pulled anything different. Just as they expected, they said, it's just tough to stop these big offensive linemen. You may have seen J.J. John with a few of the players out there last drive. J.J. got in trouble on the sidelines. They said, let Cincinnati do all the talking. Back up to you guys. Okay. Why is it the little, the smallest guy on the field always wants to talk, huh? Because <laughs> he knows those big guys will look after him. That's he why. was talking about the J.J. McCluskey, not J.J. Serlis. <laughs> Here's a pickup of about four yards by David Small, the tailback, and uh, Jeff Tullis, one of the leading tacklers in that time for Tennessee. This is a very important series for Cincinnati because if they can, if they don't move the football, I don't think their defense has had enough time to rest. They, uh, they got punished pretty good on that first drive. They just basically didn't stop with one play. And uh, they need a little time to regroup. So a first down here is essential for Cincinnati. They took Small out on the uh, previous play. They're into definitely a passing formation. And Harp is back. He delays it, though, a trap. And it worked almost for a first down up to about the 29-yard line. Little draw play. Joe Abrams was in a tailback, number nine, as you take a look. The Cincinnati offensive linemen are really taking big splits. And one thing you do when you take big splits, you allow the draw play to be effective, and you also help yourself pass blocking. And on that play, it was just a, a good execution by Cincinnati. Number 41 in your picture there was Tennessee middle linebacker Reggie Ingram. High formation. Hand off to the tailback. Got stuck right at the line of scrimmage. Loose football. Let's see who's got it. If Cincinnati's got it, it'll be a first down. I think they called it down. It's going to be very close, even if they did. I think he crossed the 30, though. We'll wait till the official spots it right on the 30. And it is a first down. Take a look, Condridge. Little isolation play, fullback lead, just like. We talked in the opening there, straight line, hard nose football. That's what they're going to do. And when you can, when you got big offensive linemen like that, you can isolate and just run right at them. Number 41 at the bottom of the pile was Reggie Ingram. Tennessee five to two edge and first downs, as you saw there. Cincinnati just picking up their second at the 30. Harp is back, throws it out in the flat. Got a man open out there. Tennessee guy came out of his shoe. It's finally out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Chris Bjornsson, six foot two, 228 pound tight end, big number 88, was the recipient of that pass from Harp. Cincinnati sure does have some big quarterbacks. There's the big tight end, Bjornsson from Youngstown, Ohio. Most of their players are from Ohio. Few from Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, but when you get to the speed positions on the Cincinnati team, like everyone else, they go to Florida. Florida. <laughs> Here's Harp, big tall quarterback. About six foot four, weighs over 200 pounds, 220 pounds, pitches out to Small. Small trying to turn the corner, does, but flag goes down over there also as he gets up to midfield and maybe a half a yard into Tennessee territory. Down to perhaps the 49 and a half, but I think we have a flag down. Possibly a holding, a clipping. Probably holding a clipping. Out there with the DBs, it's usually holding. 
That was J.J. McCleskey and Reggie Ingram, free safety and middle linebacker, trailing and making the stop on that one. Coach Murphy of Cincinnati asking for an explanation, I guess, from the official here, the referee Al Ford, and no doubt he will get one. We're six minutes now, 34 seconds away from the end of the first quarter. Illegal block against the offense, 15 yards in the end of the run, still be first down. Wow. Tough break for Cincinnati there. Illegal block on what turned out to be a pretty nice play, but it pushes them way back now into uh, their own territory back to the 36-yard line. But it's first down, though. It was after the run, so they're, they're just back a little bit, but they're still first down. Got about 18 now to go for a, uh, for a first down. Hart brings it up to the line of scrimmage. He's got Small in at tailback with a wing set on the right side this time. A couple of receivers out here on the right. Here's Harp handing off to Small. He got a hit at the line, but still got forward for a little yardage up to almost the 41. The official attendance today on homecoming, 96,597. 96,597 on a cloudy, threatening day here in Knoxville. But so far, we've just had light, very light rain. And as you can see, the field itself is in excellent condition. No slick spots out there at all. Nothing like last week. Receivers split on both sides. Two here at the bottom of your screen. High backs. Harp fakes to his tail back and wants to throw long. And Tennessee's in good position and incomplete. Balls had that one all the way. Intended for Brian Jenkins. And it was J.J. down there with him. Steve Sessions. Steve Sessions, correct. And on that number nine, not number six. Turn that number upside down. <laughs> yeah. He did a great job of just walling the receiver into the sidelines. He had no, the only, body that had, only person that had a chance to catch that football was Steve Session. Steve Session was held out of the first two ball games of the year because of an injury, and it's good to see him back in there, Condridge. He's sure a very is. aggressive ball player. Sure is. He got to get a little bit of experience last year, and uh, we're looking forward to big things from him this year. A little bit of the wave action going here as Harp goes back to throw, throws it out in the flat. It's complete to his tight end, who's run out of bounds. Finally, right around the 46-yard line. Mike Guzda, the number two tight end, 6'3", 240-pounder. He's finally knocked out of bounds. And take a look at it again here, Kondrich. He was open all the way. Just a little drop back in isolation on strong safety. And they've got a big tight end. Guzda is a big kid. <laughs> But I tell you what happened there. Lance Harp stood in there and took a shot from Todd Kelly. There's Johnny Chavis of the Tennessee staff. First down. Here's Harp back being rushed. Fires over the head of the intended receiver. His tight end Guzda this time. Same pattern really just on the opposite side of the field. And Harp made a great decision because if he throws that ball for a strike. J.J. McCleskey pit, picks it off, probably. Kondridge, I'm telling you what, uh, Tennessee's secondary, I think, since the first game we uh, saw this year against Southwestern Louisiana, their aggressiveness, their ability, I think, to come up and gamble a little bit better has improved dramatically. I think that also improves with the pass rush. When you can get a pass rush, you can take a little more, more chances in the secondary. All right, you see it's second down and 10. Big down right here for Harp and the Bearcats. Tennessee almost jumped off sides, but got back. Harp got nailed. Got out there, and Todd Kelly was right in his face. In your face football from Todd <laughs> Kelly that time. Well, either two people made a mistake or one, pe one person made a mistake. The quarterback goes left, and the two backs go right. I would seem to think that might be a quarterback mistake. Todd Kelly surpassed Dale Jones for fifth place in career sacks last week. He's a great one, no doubt. Like last year's defensive ends at Tennessee, he too is headed for the NFL someday. Here's a big down, third down and 12. Passing situation for the big quarterback being pressured. Throws out the flat. Tennessee read it all the way. Ben Talley was all over that one. Tally with great speed from outside linebacker was not fooled in the least and was right on top of it. Hey, Tennessee gave a two zone look and then jumped to two man and that was Ben Tally's man all the way and uh, just a great play. 
That was Joe Abrams, the backup tailback. And so it puts the Bearcats into uh, punt formation. Blaylock is the punter, averaging about 37 yards a kick. And the true freshman, Sean Summers, is back to receive. Blaylock gets the snap clean and gets away a nice high kick. Schammer, Summers calls for a fair catch and settles under it. And Tennessee's offense will take over. Sean Summers has not uh, bobbled or even come close to dropping a football this year. It's looked uh, very good back there. This is Corey Fleming coming out on the field, one of the real outstanding receivers. That punt covered 30 yards and uh, no return, of course. All right, Heath Schuler brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He's got Faulkner split out on the right. Kendrick Jones is out there also at the top of your screen. And to man coverage here at the bottom of the screen with Corey Fleming. That's kind of a dangerous situation, Condridge. Well, right. they cover Corey one on one. They had a little audibleization there. They uh, they saw a possible man coverage and they switched it off the zone and they just ran where the linebacker had walked himself out from and uh, picked up a couple of yards. Coach Philip Fulmer pacing the sidelines and looking on. Johnny Majors is in the coach's booth up here in the press box. Mario Brunson credited with uh, about a yard. Third down, about nine yards to go for the Volunteers. Schuler stands up, fires out here to Fleming. Fleming jukes his man, gets around him, and gets enough for a first down. Nice move by Corey Fleming. Corey Fleming is a big receiver. Gives you three, 212. Gives you a great target. And that was just a little hitch pattern. And what a lot of people don't understand about Corey is he can do some things with the football after he receives it. He was a good quarterback in high school at Stratford High School in Nashville. Was an nice. outstanding QB in the Nashville League. Here's Schuler back to throw. Fires had Faulkner open, led him just a little too far. Craig Faulkner, I'm not sure, was really looking for that pass. Well, it was one of those situations where the quarterback had to throw it before he'd like to because he ended up on his back. <laughs> he was getting severe pressure that time from the Bearcats. And Faulkner, I don't think, had turned and was quite ready for that one. It would possibly led him a little too far anyway. So Tennessee is looking at a second down and 10 situation. Ball in their own territory. Schuler back deep handoff. Good yardage. Rolling out is Mose Phillips with the football across the 35 to the 36, almost 37 yard line. Aaron Hayden, if you joined us late, James Littleman Stewart and Charlie Garner all missed some practice time this week and they're being held out and may play some later. Conrad? Well, the isolation that I've been watching from the beginning of the game with Stoll against Dixon is as I can calculate it right now, Stoll is getting the best of this matchup so far. And off on the right side this time. They don't find much running room over there as the Bearcats close this one down real quick. That was James Stewart who did come into the uh, lineup. Number 33. That is the Bearcat strength. That's what we talked about before. There's Big Stoll that uh, Condridge was talking about, and he is an outstanding offensive lineman. But the Volunteers did not pick up sufficient yardage for the first down, so they're looking at a fourth down situation. No more than uh, a half a yard to go for a first, but they're not going to take a chance. They're going into uh, punt formation. And Hutton gets away a nice one. Fredell Kimbrough is back to receive, and he's going to be buried. Back about two steps behind where he caught the football. It was Albert Sweet, not Kimbrough. Let's go down on the sidelines to uh, Ted Hall. Ted? Fellas, I just got done listening to the Cincinnati offense discussing their strategy. They're very confident. They feel like they can move the ball well against Tennessee. Believe it or not, the noise has them rattled a little bit. Despite the fact that they played in all the stadiums and they're almost accustomed to this noise, it's still they say they still have to concentrate a little more because of the noise and make sure they're all blocking the right guys. But again, they're confident. They're moving the ball. All right, let's see if they can move it. Here is Hart bringing his team up. Got him spread out. Receivers to the top of the screen. Two of them. One split out here to the right. He rolls back. Hands off to his tailback. Got by one man and finally has slipped down after picking up uh, a little bit of yardage there. Small has got pretty good balance, uh, Condridge. Uh, a couple of times you think he's going down and uh, he slips away. He's one of those 
running backs that is low to the ground and kind of just uh, slithers through holes that you can't really see him a lot of the time. There you see Penn State a big winner today over Maryland 49 to 13. North Carolina State by seven over their arch rival North Carolina. Now we get back to the action. It's second down. About eight yards to go. Here's Harp handing off to the first man who's fullback nothing. Tennessee closed the door. Reggie Ingram, the middle linebacker, stayed at home that time and really shut it down. Clock shows you we're nearing the end of the first quarter, 35 and running. Tennessee is leading 7 to nothing. On a Heath Schuler five-yard touchdown run after a long, impressive drive, the first time they had the football. Then they were unable on their second possession to uh, move the ball. Now Cincinnati taking over. Small has run eight times for 37 yards. Scored a couple of touchdowns earlier against Penn State. Harp wants to throw, fires way over the head of his intended receiver. That was the uh, tight end, Bjornsson. Well, I think the Todd Kelly factor is starting to play in this game. It, it, I wouldn't say it was a hole, but it was a pretty good yank. But they're, they're, he's starting to get around the deep, around the. Uh, left tackle a little bit and uh, that could be a factor if they get if Cincinnati gets forced into a passing situation very often you see big Todd Jeff Blaylock is in punt formation now standing on his own seven yard line and Sean Summers back to receive for the volunteers final play of the first quarter gets a kick away Summers moves up and wants a fair catch and hangs off to that football Ooh. That was a dangerous one as he was moving up there to make the catch. He was almost stumbling and falling. Right now, let's take a break with the Tennessee Volunteers on top after one quarter of play by a score of 7 to nothing over the Bears. There's Coach Johnny Majors. You can see him behind the glass in the coach's booth, which is one level above where we're broadcasting from here. And he is... Got Larry Marmy, the defensive coordinator up there with him, along with other members of the staff. Coach Johnny Majors, who has been on the practice field all week, came back less than 30 days after open heart surgery. That looked like Coach Cutcliffe on his right, so he's got offense and defense right beside him. Coach Cutcliffe calling the plays and relaying them down to uh, Coach Fulmer. Tennessee getting a little instructions down on the sidelines here, a little uh, chalkboard work down there. Now the balls are in pretty good field position right here at their own 48-yard line. First down and 10 to go as Mose Phillips and uh, Stewart are both in the backfield. Here is Schuler rolling, throwing, complete to Corey Fleming. Fleming caught it falling down. Big target, and it paid off that time. Not the best pass in the world, but enough zip on it, Conridge, to prevent the interception. Yes, he did. He just, you got your basic little bootleg to the field. He sees that the flood is bobbing. He comes back to his third receiver, gets it down a little low. A lot of receivers will thank you for that once in a while. Keep it low. They don't get hit in the face. <laughs> now for a first down, handoff. Fake to handoff in the middle. Pitches back to Stewart. Stewart coming outside. Nothing doing. James Littleman Stewart. That time uh, Garnett was all over it. Robert Garnett read that one pretty well all the way. Early seconds of the second quarter. Tennessee on top. Seven to nothing. Balls came into this one favored by about 23 points. Coming off victories against southwestern Louisiana. And, of course, Georgia on the road and Florida here at home. The Bearcats lost a heartbreaker to Penn State by four and lost one last week to Miami of Ohio on a game-ending field goal. Here's the delay. Handoff in the middle and nothing doing again. That trap, Condridge, I'm not sure is going to work on the Bearcats. Well, they are physical, and they're, they're staying at home. They're not uh, biting. They're staying at home. Now you see the first quarter statistics pretty even in rushing. Tennessee with the edge in passing and then total yardage 94 69 no turnovers and the ball six to four and first downs and more important right now seven to nothing on the scoreboard. Here's Schuler looking at a third down now and a good 14 yards to go for a first down definitely long throw time for the Bryson City rifle. Let's see if he can get it away. He cannot. He fires it out here in the flat intended perhaps for no one in particular, but uh, no flag comes down. There was a Tennessee receiver in the general neighborhood, and so Tennessee has to turn it over. 
good pressure by the Bearcat defense. As we told you before, they are physical and they're going to go one on one. They got Heath moving around in the pocket a little bit, but I think Tennessee might come back to that play because there was a number four down between the hashes wide open. That was Nate Dingle, the outside linebacker, who finally put the finishing touches on it. Here's Hutton standing at his 45, gets his kick away, and it's fumbled, but Bearcat right there to fall on it. Borgella dropped it, and Latish Kinsler fell on it. Latish Kinsler, number 15, the right man in the right spot that time for Cincinnati. That could have been a real backbreaker. Let's take a look, Condridge. Well, I tell you, there was there were two Tennessee players, number I think it was Kidd and number 94, that made a grave error there. They ran behind the the ball, thinking that he called for a fair catch. They were waiting for him to let them. He thought they were. They thought he was uh, faking them. They ran past the the intended receiver there for the ball and. If he catches that ball, he's running He's running up the field, except for the hit. Number 94 was Willie Richards, and uh, you're right. They both, uh, they were fooled by the fake. Yes. All right, the Bearcats will take over the football now. Coach Tim Murphy of Cincinnati, who took over a program that's uh, been struggling, of course. It's been about 10 years since Cincinnati had a winning uh, season. They've done a lot of renovating of their stadium in Cincinnati, and they have also... Uh, gone out and tried to recruit as best they can. They've got about 83 players on scholarship now and tell you what uh, the way they played in the first two games a couple of heartbreakers by a grand total of seven points there as the old cliche goes a lot better than their record. We've got a new quarterback Paul Anderson has come in at quarterback now he's 6 4 202 pounds and he's a junior. Tennessee jumped off sides. He fumbled. We've got all kinds of mix ups down there. Was Tennessee drawn off? Did they jump off? But we'll have to wait for the official ruling here. General confusion on that one. Condridge, that happens often when you change centers or you change quarterbacks. And when your first play the is a blitz coming back. <laughs> you have a tendency to change your tone of voice and your cadence, but this time it was a Tennessee defense. Tennessee did jump off sides. They jumped off and made contact because they they did move. He reached in and pulled it out. Tennessee almost pulled off an excellent play that time. Makes it a first down and five situation. Here's Anderson. Delay in the middle. Big hole. Bearcat Kimbrough. Running out of tailback, crosses the 35 to about the 37-yard line where they'll pull it back and spot it. Covered 13 yards. Just isolation running right up the middle, one-on-one. -on -one. You see contact. There are Cincinnati Bearcat linemen on Tennessee players, one-on-one. -on -one. The back just cuts the daylight. That's the third tailback that Cincinnati has used. There you see the season stats on the new quarterback, Anderson. Anderson reaches under, pitches back on the option. We've got a halfback pass here and got a man open. Run out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Brian Jenkins, Tennessee secondary, got fooled on that one. Fredell Kimbrough tossing it from a halfback pass or tailback pass position in this uh, case. And we'll take a look, Condridge. Tennessee was really fooled on this one. This is a great execution. Just a fake run, fake option, and wide open. If it's a, a good pass, that's a touchdown. Play cover 30 yards. First down and 10 to go. With the ball at about the 32-yard line of Tennessee. Cincinnati, Anderson, back to throw. Fires it out in the flat, overthrew oh. the intended receiver by a couple of feet. He was open also, but uh, had no chance on that when the intended receiver was... Uh, Matt Britford. Well, I know Anderson wish he had that one back. Paul wanted that one back as soon as he let it go. Good looking quarterback, 6'4, 202, junior. They've got a couple of big guys playing quarterback. A couple of tight ends playing quarterbacks. Six, what five, got. Six, four. Receivers split on the left this time, two of them. Now they send Kimbrough out and slot him out there on the right side. Second down and 10. Anderson apparently wants to throw the football. Got some time. Fires over the middle. Intercepted Jason Parker. 
The freshman's up across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Condridge, he got it on a deflection, but that's the second interception of the year for this true freshman. That was a great play as a result of great pressure. There were a lot of bodies flying around in that offensive mix there. Return for 16 yards. Take a look right this here. Kid. Ball was actually tipped off his own player. But Jason a Parker. Great reaction for a true freshman. A little pressure had to move the pocket just a bit. He was inserted into the lineup as a starter last week against Florida and played extremely well. Here's Schuler back to throw. Wants to go long. Incomplete. Corey Fleming simply could not outrun his man on that one. That was just good coverage on the part of Cincinnati all the way on that particular play. Well, I mentioned Michael Davis. I mentioned before they might come back to that play and Faulkner was wide open again. I think you might see it another time. Uh, he, th I, uh, I guess he thought he could get the ball deep and uh, take a shot, but uh, number four, Craig Faulkner coming underneath has been wide open twice on that play. Tennessee this time with two receivers bottom of the screen and they hand it off in the middle. Little man Stewart up across the 35 to the 36 yard line before he is knocked down. They tried that delayed trap play. Try to getting try to get the Cincinnati team to over pursue I guess Condridge and uh, they're staying pretty well at home. They're physical and they're going to stay right where they are planted and the only way to get them to move probably is going to be to drop back pass and sprint out and make them chase you but but they're physical enough they hold their ground on the run. Bob Duckins was the man at the bottom of that pile that time along with Gary Reed the number 97 you saw there the nose guard. Here's Schuler rolling throwing over through the intended receiver Kendrick Jones up around the 45 he was fairly open it would have been a first down but he just overthrew him a little too much arm strength that time so once again Tennessee is going to have to go into punt formation as the offense sputters a bit here. Well that was just a case of he's not getting his shoulders turned up field. He was sprinting out right and he tried to throw across his body and the ball goes high every time you do that. In punt formation is Hutton and Albert Sweet. Well, 5'9", 185 pound speedster is back to receive it. He dropped the last one, but he doesn't drop this one. And he gets a little bit of running room. It's loose. It's picked up, I think, by Tennessee. The Volunteers come up with the football. David Bennett. Just as I said, he didn't drop this one, Condridge. I may have put the old jinx on him because he turned it loose. But I tell you, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. I mean, <laughs> David's been uh, having a pretty rough couple of weeks, and it's, it's good to see him come up with a fumble recovery. Yeah, David Bennett uh, took a little heat for some plays in the Georgia game, but he came up with that one. He actually caught it, as you saw, right there in midair. Ben look Talley. At it again. Ben Talley stripped it. Good play by Ben Talley and David Bennett comes up with the ball. Got it on the first bounce and almost made it to the end zone. He was in pretty good shape for except for one player here. Schuler gunning it behind Corey Fleming. Fleming was down there open. Schuler threw it a little bit behind him. Schuler's passing is a little bit off today. It was very crisp in the first drive. Condridge right on target. And since that time, he's either been a little too strong or a little behind in front of his receiver. Well, there's Ben. Just made that great stripping of the punt return. Big number 90. One he of the nine players on the Tennessee team from the state of Georgia. Right now, Heath is just overthrowing a little bit. He's trying to put a little too much on the ball. Here's a handoff. Left side, down to the 10, the 5, down inside to the 3-yard line. James, little man, Stewart. 27 yards. Sam Payne, the right tackle, trailed the 267-pounder and made the stop. Take a look. Nice little trap play. Here's a once when you get a little bit older, you'll learn to wait for your blockers and, and, and ride that one on in. It'll be a touchdown. That's just a little bit being a little bit too we'll eager, on, but that'll come. That'll come. come and that was just great blocking up front. Good eye contact. 
A little later in his career, he'll score on plays like that. Number 12 down there throwing the block was Corey Fleming. Here's the quarterback spinning. Little mix up, I think, and Heath Schuler almost <laughs> scored on a mix up. He turned, got it down to the one yard line. Looked like he wanted to pitch out Conridge, and uh, whoever he intended to pitch to was not looking, and just a little bit of confusion on that one. Little counter option. And what happens is he gets, he doesn't follow the play long enough. He gives up on it too fast. And that's one thing that'll happen when you're younger. But if he carries on and continues with that play, it's a touchdown because he will get a chance to pitch it. He just got a little flustered right there. It's second down, a little over a yard to go for a touchdown. Up over the top goes Kenneth Campbell running out of fullback, and I don't believe he made it in. Looks like he may be inches shy. Kenneth Campbell, 6'2", 229-pound junior. Running behind Mario Brunson, the number one fullback. He's in there for Mario right now. I think if Kenneth had that to do over again, he wouldn't dive. He'd just cut to his right and walk into the end zone. That's a case of just being a little young and a little excited and trying to dive before you really had to. Third down and inches to go. Stewart and Campbell in the backfield. And this time, I'm not sure they're in there yet. Uh, no signal from the referee, so apparently Tennessee will be looking at a fourth down situation here. They're trying to unstack the mass of humanity down there. You see it right there. Looked to me like he was sitting in the end zone, Conrad. I think it was a fumble, though. I don't think he actually had the ball. Turned it loose in there. Probably so, because his back was too. See, that the ball came line. out. Yes, it did, very clearly. That's a case of quarterback not having the snap before he wants to get up and over. Tennessee going for it on fourth. Look for Little Man over the top, and there it is. That play might be called on the previous one, but they wanted to give Campbell another shot at it, I guess, Condridge. But uh, when you get down to the one, it's going to be very difficult to stop James Stewart up and over. Got great leaping ability. Great leaping ability. And, and the play before, he just did not have the football before he tried to dive over. You've got to gather the football first. Lance Wheaton will be holding. Mark Holland snapping it and next fourth is still perfect by the way Holland was given a scholarship this week to snap on the uh, kicks for Tennessee so his uh, good work on the practice field has paid off here's just a perfect if you watch not only does he get up and over but he gets his body turned and has the ball away from the defense watch this he's up and over balls behind him defense can't reach in and punch it out up and over if they don't stop you at the line of scrimmage it's a touchdown that's a textbook way of diving up and over a lot of people think you just run up there and jump that's not it it's a technique to it you have to turn your body keeping the ball away from the defense and get up up and in get it in the end zone Tennessee on top 14 to nothing with a little over nine minutes remaining here in the first half homecoming 92 the lights have been on since the start of the ball game here it's a very overcast day but we've been fortunate we had rain off and on prior to the game and right up to game time but it was a light rain and hasn't affected the playing surface one bit it's been very uh, very nice and dry out there and so far, we've had nothing since the game started in the way of shower activity. So we're in good shape right now. Everybody keep your fingers crossed. Let's keep the old grads happy here at the Nayland and keep them dry. One of them sitting here to my right, uh, Mr. Berry, who is fighting for us today. Only Russ is not that old. Kind of he, still one of the young grads. Tennessee has Joey Chapman kicking off, and he drives it all the way into the end zone. No return on this one. Joey Chapman pumped up and firing it deep into the end zone. There's your scoring drive. Six plays, 30 yards, covered a span of two minutes and 10 seconds. Stewart with a one yard up and over for the touchdown. Show me again. Show me again. All right. Where are you, Joe? <laughs> there you go. I wonder does he eat key? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right. The Bearcats down 14 to nothing. They've still got Anderson in there at quarterback now. He's the number two quarterback. Came on in the last series. Hands off to Small. Nothing doing. Tennessee waiting for it on the left side that time. Reggie Ingram at the bottom of the stack. Number 41 getting up there. Reggie out of Memphis, Tennessee. There you see him, 6'2", 255 pounds. He came to Tennessee, I think, Kindridge at about 220, 225, so he spent some very valuable time in the weight room. Of course, and, and he had the... He was unfortunate there was a guy named Ernest Fields here before him or he would have been playing before. Second down and about nine yards to go. Anderson is back to throw, got plenty of time, fires it, and it is caught. Nice catch, juggled it a little bit. Uh, that was Chris Bjornsson, the tight end, but he came down with it. Looks like it's enough for a first down. It's across the 30. Just a little drop back isolation. Anderson gets his feet set really well, throws a great ball here. That's that looks easy, but that ball was thrown between over linebackers and between defensive backs. That excellent. was that was an excellent throw. Pretty decent coverage, passing yardage. Uh, Cincinnati has taken the edge right there, 69 to 58. But Tennessee 14 to nothing on the scoreboard. Here's Anderson handing off a. De Delay in the middle this time, and the fullback gets up across the 35, 36, 37 yard line. There's some future right. ball cheerleaders. Nice looking uh, group right there, and they're happy right now. Their team is on top by a score of 14 to nothing. And there's some folks down from Cincinnati, which is not a bad drive down through Louisville and Lexington, right on into Knoxville, and they're pretty well represented here. It's second down now and roughly four yards to go for a first. Anderson rolling, throwing in the flat to his tight end. It's complete and he's got the first down as he crosses the 45 up to about the 47-yard line. It's Bjornsson again. Chris Bjornsson, who's six foot two, 229 pounds. Pretty good target out there and on that rollout, sending that uh, tight end out, Condridge, in the flat. He's uh, finding himself open. He's been wide open a lot today and... Uh... Hey, right now they're they're double teaming a little bit, but they're they're giving Todd Kelly a rough time on the sprint out. Of course, they're putting more than one man on him too, but uh, they're blocking. Tennessee playing a little bit soft at the corners on him, and I think the ball jumped off sides. Question is, did Cincinnati move? We always wait for the official ruling right there. I think that's a Tennessee offside. Made contact. JJ got fooled. With probably a little voice inflection with the quarterback. The ball was Contact with the defense, five yards. Referee Al Ford gave you the call right there. Tennessee did indeed jump, and Cincinnati did indeed not move. So it becomes a first and five. Kentucky beats South Carolina today by a score of 13 to 9. Tennessee later will be playing both of those teams, and the uh, Cincinnati team later will be playing Kentucky. Here's Anderson on the delay to his tailback, and he got racked after a couple of yards pretty good right at the 45-yard line. J.J. Surlis made the stop that time. There's J.J. getting up off the bottom of the stack. A man with a couple of bad knees who's playing hurt, playing in pain, but... Uh, Loves the game and is going to play as long as he possibly can. He almost gave up the sport, Condridge, because of that knee problem, but he's hanging in there. Sure did. All right, it's third down now coming up. Small has run 10 times for 39 yards. Picking up a couple the last time. Here he goes again, and he's got the first down into Tennessee territory down across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. George Kidd. Linebacker on the outside, 6'1", 205 pound red shirt freshman made the stop for Tennessee. Bearcats moving with the football right now and Tennessee trying to dig in defensively and protect a 14 to nothing lead with 550 remaining in the first half of play. Anderson with the eye back. Receivers on the right side, two of them, and that's where he wants to go. Got a man open over there, and it's complete right at the first down marker, and I think he did make the first down. Anderson with good arm strength that time, Condridge. Uh, Great arm strength. It's just a little two-man pattern. It's uh, a hook and a flat, 
And uh, when you're in zone coverage to the field, it's a long ways for the linebacker to have a run, have to run. Mike Guzda just made a great little breakout, and uh, Anderson got the ball to him, and you can outrun the linebackers to the field like that. Yeah, well, those two missing the wide receivers for Cincinnati, they're really working their tight ends today and doing a very good job of it. First down and 10 to go for the Bearcats. Here's the handoff to Small. Big hole got through down close to the 20-yard line. McCleskey out of the secondary had to make the stop for Tennessee that time. The stop is at the 21-yard line. It's just an isolation. A little turnout on Todd Kelly and just good hard running. It's good positive play. 14 to nothing Tennessee. A touchdown here nearing the... Oh, we still got five minutes to go in the second quarter, but it would be awfully big for the Bearcats. Morrell, here's Anderson rolling left. Got a man open and threw it behind him. Just a kind of a bad pass that time. Uh, the receiver was uh, down in the crease in the seam, uh, Condridge, and uh, probably wouldn't have scored, but he would have picked up enough for a first down. That was Albert Sweet. I think Paul got a little bit turned around. Anderson was just a little, didn't get his body turned around on that one. He'd like to have that one back because I think he can complete that pass. We're talking about the tight ends. They have been... Uh, on the receiving end of six passes for 66 yards and you saw the numbers there by the number two quarterback Anderson who's running the show right now. Big down here third down and three Anderson stands up in trouble sacked by George Kidd. George Kidd following him and would not be blocked out on that one nice play for the freshman. Once again, Todd Kelly put a little pressure, made him step up. And once Anderson stepped up, George Kidd was right there. I noticed a little jawing starting to happen on <laughs> offense and defensive line. Tom Zopko will try a 41 yarder. It is blocked. We'll take a look at the replay and try to pick up who blocked it in there. Looks like Ben Talley might have big number 90. Ben Talley has got arm spans like Dr. J in basketball, you know, Conrad. He can, uh, he can really stretch out. Take a look. Oh, he came clean, too. He came off of their right side, Tennessee's. Uh, came off of Cincinnati's right side, Tennessee's left side. They're up back, stepped out to block out, left a wide open lane. Ben Talley came through clean. Nobody touched him, blocked it. It would have been about 41 yards had it been uh, the attempt to uh, gotten off, but... Let's go down on the sidelines to uh, Ted Hall. Ted? Difficult place to be down here near the horseshoe of the stadium. This is Dr. Birchfield. He's got one of these decibel reading things. How loud does it get down here? Well, on that block punt, it was 102. How loud is the loudest it's been in this game? Uh, in this game, we've had 108 on the other end. In Florida, it got up to 115 decibels. Right. Put that into our terms. How loud is that? That's extremely loud. That's a jet? Up real close. Standing next to a jet is how loud it gets down here. You think it's not tough? Back up top. Jerry Colquitt throwing to Corey Fleming. It's complete for a Tennessee first down up close to the 35-yard line. So Jerry Colquitt has entered the ball game at quarterback now and on his first play connects for 14 yards. Good confidence builder there, Conridge, to uh, come on with your first play. There's nothing like completing that first ball. Then you walk through, it's amazing. Your chest sticks out a little bit. You straight up to the line of scrimmage. It's, uh, look at it, already audible in second play. He's ready. He's ready to go. A little a little confidence in the huddle. Here he is rolling back, handing off to his tailback, stumbling across the line of scrimmage is Charlie Garner making his first appearance in the ball game. Charlie a little bruised and battered after the Florida game. Missed some practice time this week and was expected to see some, but uh, limited action. Mose Phillips started the game today at tailback. We have seen James Littleman Stewart in action. In fact, he scored. Now we see Garner. We, I don't believe, have seen Aaron Hayden as yet. No, and uh, James Warren is in the game also at right tackle. Here's Jerry Colquitt checking off on a second down and about seven to go. Colquitt pitches wide to Charlie Garner trying to turn the corner. Played beautifully by Cincinnati all the way. Coming up to make the stop was Jocelyn Borgella. Borgella, 5'10", 179, junior. You'll see, Condridge, that uh, he was not fooled on this one. No, he uh, just not good enough block outside, and 
he made a great defensive play because if he doesn't, if he doesn't come up and make that play, Garner gets the corner and it could have been a big play. One of the players on the Cincinnati team, one of the speed men from Florida, Borgella from Miami, as you saw. Here's Dutton in the lineup now, and the pass is over the middle. It's complete falling down with a catch. Is Dwayne Freeman. Well, it's good to see Dwayne Freeman in the ball game right now. We've been expecting to see a little bit of him uh, today, perhaps, and uh, made a nice catch that time. Play covered 17 yards, Kendrick. Nice drop by Jerry. He stands in there. Little pressure, doesn't matter. He delivers the ball. Dwayne makes a catch. It, the confidence factor there with Jerry, you, you just stood right in there and delivered that ball, and uh, Dwayne made a good catch. Shane Burton, another freshman, is tight end right now. Here's Tennessee driving in the middle down close to the 40-yard line. Volunteers had Charlie Garner that time going right up the middle, not trying to sprint outside as we have uh, seen him do on several occasions in this early part of the season, trying to use his outside speed. That time, Charlie just went right down the gut. And it becomes second down. Oh, about three yards to go for a first down. Colquitt hands off to Garner. Stutter stepping around and nowhere to go this time. They were looking for Garner in the middle. As the clock shows 143 here to go. That was Jason Coppice. 6'2", 236 pound linebacker in the middle who made the stop. There's Coach Fulmer who's got Randy Sanders, former quarterback here at Tennessee with a headset on there and talking to Dutton who just came off the field Tennessee in a definite passing situation here third down and Colquitt is back he's in trouble he spins out of it tries to get back to the line of scrimmage and quite can't quite do it so Tennessee is going to be looking at a fourth down situation clock shows a minute four Condridge what do you do right here do you go in and kick it away or try to run another play well, I think they're probably going to pooch kick it because, or, you know, there's a possibility there uh, could be room for a fake here if you let the clock run down and take the penalty. Clock is still running, 45, 44 seconds. And he is going, going to away. snap it, and uh, they are going to kick it. Hutton's kick is going to hit on about the four and go on into the end zone. So Cincinnati will take over with 34 seconds remaining here in the first half of play on homecoming 92 for Tennessee the Bearcats and the Volunteers in the series and quite a while since they have met but Tennessee holds a three to one edge and right now it's 14 to nothing edge Tennessee on the scoreboard there you see the time 34 seconds you see the sea of orange there a lot of that is orange uh, or orange ponchos raincoats because uh, we've had a few light drizzles here on and off but uh, nothing uh, dramatic so far in the way of rain now let's see if Cincinnati tries to just play it conservative here or do they go for for the bomb here let's see they run it right up the middle Tennessee trying to chase him down he's up across the 30 small the tailback uh, to about the 33 yard line Tennessee backed off a little bit Condridge I think that time expecting that they might throw it and uh, that play perhaps was uh, the result of Tennessee's defense easing back a little bit. Well, I I just have a bad feeling about anything that resembles prevent defense. I don't like Prevents that. victories, doesn't it? I don't <laughs> like that. It's, uh, you've got to play every down. There you see Small with 13 rushes for 68 yards. Had over 1,000 running last year. He's not a not a big guy. He's 5'9", 180 pounds. But Cincinnati doesn't attempt to get off another play. They just simply let it run out. And so at halftime, it is the Tennessee Volunteers leading Cincinnati Bearcats by a score of 14 to nothing. Tennessee scoring in quarter number one and again in quarter number two. I have to sprint out on them and make them do some other things. Whitlow kicks off and uh, Sean Summers is down there, but it's going to be picked up by an up man. I think it's Phillips. And he's up across the uh, 20 up to about maybe the 24 yard line. Mose Phillips before he is dropped. It was not a good kick and often uh, one like that you'll have a chance to break it past that first wave. But uh, Tennessee couldn't quite do it that time. But they'll put it into position into play in fairly uh, decent field position at the 24 yard line. He shoots back in the game. 
Operating at quarterback, uh, Jerry Colquitt uh, did play some in the second quarter, and uh, there you see Heath Schuler's numbers, rushing four times for 19. One touchdown, of course. He turns, hands off to his tailback, nothing. Half a yard at the most, Kenneth Campbell running out of fullback that time. Just could not get uh, any steam built up for any yardage. The passing numbers on Heath Schuler. Six out of 13 for 58 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Had two or three that were had men open in the first half, but uh, just a little too strong on uh, two or three of his passes. He'll settle down perhaps here in the second half, and we'll see if he puts the ball up in the air some more. Right now might be a good time to do it. He hands off instead to his tailback. Pretty good running room up close to a first down that time. It's Mose Phillips. Big number 19 out of Hillsborough High School in Nashville, Tennessee, where he too, we mentioned Corey Fleming being a quarterback, Condridge in high school. Mose Phillips was a quarterback. This is just a little isolation. If you watch Kenny Campbell come around with a came around and got right up in the face of number 48, which is Jason Coppas, and uh, allowed for the play to be successful. Jonathan Roberts out of the secondary also in on that stop. Here's Schuler with the receiver set on each side, two to the top of the screen. Hands off to Phillips, nothing. Driven back three or four yards. James Stewart it was. Little man could find nothing. That spot, absolutely. And they needed only about a yard to go for a first, or a couple of yards, really. So it brings up a punting situation. Cincinnati on that one, Condridge, was not fooled in the least. Not at all, but uh, you just can't. <laughs> They're too physical. You can't run right at them. That's just, uh, they're not going to allow you to do that. Tennessee, three of nine in the third down conversions. What a kick by Hutton. And fielded by Swoot, and he is back across the 25 to about the 27-yard line where the Bearcats of Cincinnati will see what kind of offense they can come up with. Lawrence, Lance Harp, who started this ball game at quarterback, Big 6'5", 222-pounder is not injured, but Paul Anderson did replace him, and we'll start here in the second half. Now down to Ted. Bob and Condridge, I asked one of the defensive players what the locker room was like at halftime. He said, expect some big changes. Tried to get him to explain, but he had to run back on the field, so let's see what he means. Big changes, perhaps, for the defense. We'll see. All right. Interesting. 51 yards on that last uh, punt by Hutton, who came into this... Uh, Ball game averaging slightly over 40 yards per kick. The return was good for about seven yards. There are the figures on Paul Anderson. Three out of six. 31 yards. It looks like uh, Condridge, he does have a little bit better arm than the, the starting quarterback. Well, it, it, it certainly looks that way. And he does look like he's a little more relaxed in the pocket. Uh, Lance seemed to be more of a guy that might move around a little bit, and, and, and Paul Anderson seems to be more of a guy that is really more comfortable standing tall, planting his feet, throwing the football. We're early in the third quarter of play. Tennessee is leading by a score of 14 to nothing, as you see the Bearcat there. Made his way down from Cincinnati to cheer on his team here today at Nayland Stadium. Anderson brings his team up. The tailback is Small, who's had a pretty good workout today. Got receivers split on both sides. Hands off to Small. Nothing. Tennessee waiting for that one, and they jammed it up. Looked like Big Todd Kelly, also 38. Jeff Tullis, 38 and 58 all over that one. That was tool shed right <laughs> where he should have been that time. That's right. They ran a little game. Tullis ran a down the line slant and uh, paid off that time. That might be some of the changes that Ted was talking about. They might start to stun a little bit. It's second down now, about 14 yards to go. Cincinnati getting themselves in a passing situation even though they're deep in their own territory. Here is Anderson firing away over the head of everybody. Closest man to it was Jason Parker, the Tennessee safety man who uh, was well over his head, apparently intended for Albert Sweet, the wide receiver. But Anderson really uncorked that one. Coach Chavis signaling for the defense out there. The formation. Reggie Ingram will relay that to his teammates. All right, here's a big play for both of them. It's third down and 14. A most definite passing situation, and Tennessee knows it. Let's safely bring some people on this one. 
Shotgun for Anderson. Got time, got plenty of time. Firing incomplete right into the hands of the receiver. Not much of an excuse for dropping that one, Codridge. You've got to catch that football. That was an excellent throw by Paul Anderson. He stood in there. They faked Tennessee, faked the blitz. Cincinnati picked it up. Paul Anderson stood right in there, threw the ball. You've got to catch that one. You just got to catch that one. Albert Sweet was the man that it was intended for, and it went right through his hands. So Tennessee gets away with what would have been a first down there. Instead, it's a punting situation for Cincinnati Bearcats. Sean Summers standing back in Tennessee territory at the 42-yard line. Here comes the kick. This one may be returnable. Summers gets under it, looks for the sidelines. Got one block and no more. Gets across midfield. Pretty decent return. Tennessee will be set up in good field position on the Bearcat side of the 50. The punt covered 37 yards, and Sean Summers' return was for 11 yards. So Cincinnati now will go on defense. The Volunteers will send Heath Schuler out. Mose Phillips comes out at tailback. Georgia leading 17 to 3 over Ole Miss in the second quarter of play. There's a little pass out in the flat, and it is complete to Corey Fleming. Let's see if that completion elevates the confidence of uh, Heath Schuler there. Uh, Jerry Coakwood had a lot of success with completing his first pass, so uh, maybe something might happen here. Conrad Schuler seems to be uh, mixing it up a little bit more. Earlier in the year, it had been going a lot to uh, Craig Faulkner. Now he's uh, kind of spreading it around a little bit as far as his receivers are concerned. Here's a handoff to Mose Phillips, and he gets across the line of scrimmage for a couple of yards. Fleming has, in fact, got five receptions today for about 53 yards. Reggie Hudson made the stop that time for the Bearcats. It'll move the chains. Tennessee first down and 10 to go. With 11.25 to go in the third quarter of play. 14 to nothing. We got a lot of action ahead. Bearcats jumping around on defense. Schuler, I don't think, is going to audible, though. He's going to throw it out in the flat. And it's complete. Caught nicely by Corey Fleming. That's a super catch. It didn't gain a whole lot, but it shows the ability of Fleming to hang on to the ball. Little three-step drop hitch, and the ball gets away from... That, Corey, that one handed was, that was a great catch. I was so busy watching the catch, I was stopped analyzing there. But that was just a three-step hitch, and uh, Corey made a great catch. Brian Spivey's still playing. I tell you, he's he's going through that back injury, still out there competing. That's a great job by Brian Spivey. Sixth reception, as you saw. Here's Mose Phillips, big hole down across the 25 to the 24-yard line. Nice blocking on the left side of the line that time for Big Mose. Phillips says Alan Fletcher, the safety, finally dropped him. Mose got into the secondary there, if you'll see. After he got into the secondary, he wanted to decide, am I halfback or my fullback? Oh, I'm a fullback. Let's run over. <laughs> All right, it becomes first down and 10 as the chains are waved down the field. Tennessee with a one-back set this time for Heath Schuler. See if he puts it in the air here. No, he gives it off to Charlie Garner. Garner breaks it down pretty close to another first down. A little bit shy as he crossed the 15-yard line. I think they'll pull it back and spot it right at the 15-yard line. Nice quick pop that time, uh, Condridge. Great block by Stoll. As we as we talked about the, this matchup earlier in the in the game, Stoll against Dixon, and the numbers game is what made Heath Schuler check off on this play. He had the same play call left. He checked it off and called it right. It's about a yard shy of a first down. It's second down and one. Schuler looking over that defense and taking a lot of time. And Cincinnati apparently has called a timeout here as they perhaps were not in the defense that they uh, were looking for. And so they, I guess, wisely, Condridge called a timeout because uh, they could see something there that perhaps would have made it rather easy. Similar situation perhaps happened in the Florida game when J.J. McCleskey saw the Florida tight end in a position to score and uh, tried to call a timeout but couldn't quite get there. Well, the difference is uh, your middle linebacker can turn around and be right in the face of the referee, and J.J. had to run from the back, and they got in to see him. But uh, 
obviously he saw something that he didn't like and uh, that's a smart thing to do if you've uh, you can recognize it early enough don't take a bad play use a timeout that was Randy Sanders there with a headset along with uh, coach Philip Fulmer talking to the quarterback Heath Schuler who got his instructions on the sidelines obviously the play came in from upstairs and we'll see what he does here he's looking at a second and one it's a good play for Tennessee to gamble do you go and just jam it down the middle and try to pick up the first down or do you gamble uh, Condridge your quarterback likes a play situation like this doesn't he? well he sure does because you've got uh, a lot of options but uh, look at that stat Cincinnati minus three here in the uh, second half Here's the handoff first down right down the middle goes Charlie Garner to uh, pick up uh, his first down and keep the drive alive for the volunteers. Charlie Garner all of the tailbacks except Hayden have seen action today all of them were banged up this week after the Florida game nothing serious just a lot of bumps and bruises and for that reason Moe's Phillips started the game at the tailback today. Here's the hand back to Garner he tries to cut back nothing. Cincinnati waiting for him that time. It was like the Bearcats were in the huddle and heard that play. Linebacker Scott Brown, six foot, 240 pounder, met a guy that weighs about 180. Guess who won that? That's just an isolation play, and we, not we, Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee got beat. They just, Cincinnati overpowered them. No backs in this time. Receivers all over the place. Heath Schuler going to throw, fires, touchdown! Corey Fleming! Top comes alive as Fleming slants through the end zone, open just enough for the rifle arm of Heath Schuler to find him. Seventh catch on the day for Corey Fleming, who's having a great day. Seven for 67 yards to be exact. Bexport still perfect. Right down the middle, and the Volunteers go on top by a score of 21 to nothing. Condridge they had sort of floundered around there for a while in the second quarter, and here to in the early in the uh, third quarter so that was a, a drive that they needed this is just a drop back with a crossing pattern and Shula gets it away and Corey's a big target in there if he, if he can get behind the linebackers he's a great target to throw to because he's so tall and he just gathers it in runs right through right in the middle of the zone uh, the Cincinnati defense was not out of position it was just the, that's where that zone is vulnerable down the middle there's coach majors obviously a happy camper right now that catch uh, might remind folks in Cincinnati a little bit of another guy who played football here at uh, Tennessee who's now with the Cincinnati Bengals Mr. Carl Pickens and another one who maybe a little bit more reminds you of Alvin Harper who's with the Dallas Cowboys Condridge uh, right. Harper was that big target of course and could uh, run those slant patterns beautifully Tim McGee also who's right there in Cincinnati playing but uh, those those big the big guys coming across the middle when there is a two deep zone and there's some space in the middle they don't really have to worry about getting clocked they're a great target and if they're they've got enough uh, confidence and courage to go in the middle and catch the ball it's uh, it's great for an offense Come to think of it you people watching in Cincinnati have uh, a lot to thank the balls for the uh, receivers uh, McGee and Pickens and of course Carl Zander played many years for the Bengals out of Tennessee at linebacker this one into the end zone Bearcats going to bring it out of there a little bit of a mistake perhaps they didn't get back to the 20 downfield to make the stop that time for Tennessee was Gallion I believe Scott Gallion Scott Gallion is a tight end who is a our linebacker who is a true freshman and he's been extremely effective on kick kick coverage the scoring drive eight plays 49 yards took 255 off the clock capped by Fleming's 12 yard reception from Heath Schuler. And now the Bearcats are down 21 to nothing and let's see if they put it in the air or if they try to uh, remain rather conservative. I would think they'll go to the air here. Here's Anderson back to throw being pressured being pressured fires it incomplete. 
finally just threw it away Condridge uh, Jason Parker was right up there ready to intercept had he not well that's one of the few times today that uh, Anderson really got fooled he he audible off because he thought he was getting a blitz and Tennessee defense did what's called show blitz they went up like the blitz and then dropped off and there was no man coverage and he was trying to throw a hitch pattern into a zone in the short side of the field and then you just can't do that and he wisely threw it out of bounds Anderson has attempted uh, nine passes and has completed three now for a total of 31 yards in this ball game it is second down and ten to go for the Bearcats Tennessee crowd streaming for defense out of the shotgun Anderson fires it out in the flat complete up to the 20 22 23 yard line before the stop is made it was Joe Abrams coming out of the tailback position out of the backfield who swung out and uh, took the pass and picked up a little yardage but it's not enough for a first down ball is spotted at uh, right on the 24 yard line he needs about uh, three more for a first down Needs to move it to about the 32 for a first down. Or correct to the uh, 27 for a first down. Here's Anderson rolling right. If he pulls it down, he's got it, and he does. He picked up his first down by about a yard as he's run out of bounds around the 28-yard line, but he got enough for a first down. Coach Tim Murphy there for Cincinnati. Giving some words of encouragement to his quarterback and a uh, play at the same time, perhaps. Cincinnati moves the chains, first down and 10. They got the eye backs. They got one receiver to the top of your screen, two to the bottom here. Tennessee perhaps expecting pass as the Bearcats trail 21 to nothing. Tennessee was about to fool them again defensively, I think, Condridge, and they called the timeout. Sure did. And uh, they they showed blitz, man, and then dropped off into two zone. And uh, if you've got a man pattern call and they jump into two zone, you got to call timeout. Go down play. to the uh, sidelines where Ted Hall is standing by. Ted? You guys, we talked about the composure that Cincinnati had earlier in the ball game. We said they've been able to play at Penn State. They've been able to play at Alabama and Florida State, and the crowd hasn't bothered them. This was a key series. This series going on right now is very crucial for the team, and they pulled themselves out of a hole here deep. The decibel level, we'll talk about that one more time. It got up to 96 as they were trying to call a play. That would be like standing next to a train as the whistle is blowing and trying to call a play and have everybody on the line hear you and execute. They're doing a job against this Tennessee crowd, 96,000 plus. Us, trying their best to mess them up and they're holding it together all right thank you very much Ted awesome looking suspenders Ted has on down there he, huh? kind of a GQ look there's uh, Jerry Colquitt warming up so with Tennessee leading 21 to nothing he did see some action in the first half and he may see some here in the uh, third quarter of play Right now, though, Cincinnati's got the football. Tennessee's defense on the field. And they're going to be looking past. Missed the snap from center, and I think the quarterback fell on it. A flag falls also here on the near side of the field. Flag dropped uh, right even with the line of scrimmage as uh, the quarterback just seemed to lose it as he was coming out from under the center that time. We'll wait the official ruling here. Might have gotten out just a tad early. Al Ford. Illegal procedure by the offense on six men on the line. The penalty is declined. Second down. Oh. Second down. Third penalty of the game. There it is. A little fumble snap. Actually, he's pretty lucky Tennessee didn't pounce on that one. Right. But the penalty was. Six men on line of scrimmage. Lawrence Harp is uh, back in the lineup. He ends off to Small. Small's got running room and a first down as he crossed the 40 to the 41 yard line. A first down by a yard. Lance Harp back in at quarterback. Reggie Ingram trailing the play made the stop, but not until after the first down marker. Take a look at it, Conrad. Had a little stunt going on with Todd Kelly and Ben Talley, and uh, they ran what's called an X, and Ben Talley didn't feel the outside. 
David Small, 15 rushes for 76 yards in this ball game. He's been a busy tailback today. We expected that. Lance Harp may be checking off at the line of scrimmage, taking a lot of time. Comes down the line, going to be hit. No gain, nothing. <laughs> Kelly, Todd Kelly trailed it all the way and made the stop. Parker coming up from safety to make sure he went no further, but with Mr. Kelly there to make the uh, tackle, you usually do not need a whole lot of assistance, Conrich. Well, that's a tough play going to the short side of the field, especially when you have a defensive end like Todd Kelly that has that much that much speed. He can just trail you down the line, and then the sideline becomes a, the Tennessee extra player, and uh, you have no place to pitch the ball. Second down and 10 yards to go now for the Bearcats with the ball at the Cincinnati 40-yard line. Are back to throw, being pressured from the backside. They got him. There comes a flag down. Kelly was there. We probably got a holding penalty here against Cincinnati. Jeff Tullis was there also. Again, 38 and 58. Meet at the quarterback. <laughs> That's one of their sayings. Let's meet at the QB. If it's holding, uh, it was dropped in the vicinity of where you expect holding to be in the uh, backfield, the offensive backfield. Stops the clock at 634, remaining in the third quarter. We talked about Tennessee going on the road next to play at LSU. The Cincinnati team will be playing Kent. And push in the back. The white. Ten yards penalty in the spot of the foul. Still second down. Now, to get a call like that, you've got to be awful quick. And what happens is Todd Kelly beats his man, and instead of holding him, he gives him a push in the back. And that's a penalty. That's a bad. Oh, ouch. That is not. I hate to see that. I hope Lance's harp is okay. That's a uh, wow. Well, he's back. He's okay. <laughs> he that, that looked ugly. Yeah, I could have really twisted a knee there. It looked like that might be the possibility. But it is Lance Harp at quarterback. He's looking at second and a mile to go, 20 some yards to go for a first, and uh, that's not the way you're going to pick it up. Tennessee's defense stacked and ready for that. Surlis gets up off the bottom. It was uh, Mike. Britford. Whoa, look at that. It's like a baseball score, but Arizona is leading Miami by a score of seven to two. Number one Miami Hurricanes. That is halftime, though. And that game is being played in Miami, right? One back set this time, so you figure at third down and 24. There you see the conversions for Cincinnati and for Tennessee. Here's Harp. Got a long way to go. Got a little time out of the pocket now looking for some help. He can't find it. Tennessee smashes him down. Ben Talley, one of the leaders that time on defense. One of the first men there. Big number 90 for Tennessee. Also Surlis. So it'll be a punting situation for the Bearcats as Tennessee's defense stiffens and holds. John Summers will drop back. Blaylock will be kicking for the Bearcats, standing at his 19-yard line to receive the snap. Sean Summers drifts back to his 30. Tennessee blocked a field goal attempt in the first half. They did block a punt, remember, against Florida. They're not coming that strong. Well, they almost did get in there. J.J. McCleskey almost got in. John Summers takes it, looks for the wall, heads for the sideline. He's, got, a He's wall. got the wall. He's got a wall. He's gone. He that. gone. out of Oak Ridge High School, Sean Summers. The punt was 44 yards. The return, 77 yards for Sean Summers, who came to Tennessee. They said he can play defensive back. He can be a tailback. He can play most any position he wants to. He's that good of an athlete. Here's the extra point by Bexport. It's up and good. And the Volunteers go on top. 
at homecoming 28 to nothing over Cincinnati. The Bearcats now find themselves in serious trouble with 423. J.J. McCleskey almost gets the block on it. That's the way to lay out to try to block a punt. And then you could just see the wall set up. And it was just block after block and then open space. And the true freshman, the last block there, who was number 16, the last block, Victor Brown. Victor Brown made the last block, and it was just clear sailing. Speed gets him past number 47. Look at Victor here. And then this last block right here on your corner. There you go. Whoa. That's called the depleter, <laughs> folks. And then it's uh, six. I just saw something that was a little disturbing, though. I saw Mario Bronson in street clothes walking back on the field. Well, that's why we were seeing Kenneth Campbell's son in that first half, so that is not good news. We'll see if Ted Hall can find out a little bit more about that later down on the sidelines. Uh, Mario Brunson in street clothes, which means, of course, uh, he's had some sort of an injury here. He has uh, a slight head injury, we're told. So Ted has found that out for us, a slight head injury. So it doesn't sound serious, but uh, that's a part of the anatomy you do not fool around with if there's any doubt at all. So they have taken him out of there, and that's a wise move on the part of the doctors and trainers of Tennessee. Now, Chapman will kick off for the volunteers, and uh, Cincinnati would like to do something in the, the return department right here to give their team a spark. Chapman's not going to give them much of a chance, though. Wow. <laughs> Right out of the end zone. Right out of the south end zone here, and so Cincinnati will take over at the 20-yard line. I think Mr. Summers got Mr. Chapman excited a little I bit. I think he, he did. He got him pumped a little. He's had uh, about three kicks, though, that have gone either in two or through the end zone, so uh, that's a valuable weapon. The people on the kick team love to have people around who do that sort of thing. It remains uh, Lance Harp at quarterback small still in there at tailback Bearcats now will have to try to air it out I guess down 28 to nothing Tennessee knows that of course they give it off instead to small though and he's got good hole good yardage for a first down across the 30 up to about the 32 around 12 yard pickup that time for the tailback Steve Session from the left cornerback spot over there made the stop take a look at this one nice Patrick. isolation play and uh, just some great running here I mean that's uh, that's the way you draw it up. You want to cut back, start out to the left, and when they when the hole opens up backside, you've got to have that peripheral vision to see backside and make the cut. Small's been doing that all day. And you see uh, the figures on number three, David Small, as he gets close to the hundred yard mark, got 93 yards right now. They give it to him again, and he's going to be right at the 100-yard mark now as he gets across the 35 to maybe the 36-yard line before Reggie Ingram makes the stop for the Volunteers. Looks like they're going to spot it right on the 35-yard line. 3.30 and running the clock here in the third quarter of play. Tennessee favored by about 23 points coming into this one. They're leading it by 28 right now. 28 to nothing over the Bearcats. This team scared the daylights out of Penn State. Penn State had to come from behind late with about six minutes to go to finally beat them by four. Miami had to kick a field goal at the buzzer to uh, beat them. Miami of Ohio, that is. Here's Hart. He swarmed under. Took too much time. And Tennessee got all over him. Shane Bonham. Shane Bonham, big number 92, 6'4", 270 pounder. Crashed in there and made the stop. He's from Alaska, right, Cundridge? He's a little, little drop back. I think he's trying to go deep this time. And Lance Harp is looking downfield, and, and the pocket just collapses on him. And uh, Shane Bonham is a guy that I've made mention of earlier in the broadcast because the three tackles that are playing there have really done a great job of just being constant, playing constant football and allowing the defensive ends to be single block. Third down, about 12 to go. Hart throwing. He's got his man, but he's short of the first down. Tennessee secondary really racking on that one. Steve Session was the first to arrive. <laughs> Session even lost his headgear. That's what you call throwing your body in there. 
no regard for the body. Here he comes. Number nine, Steve Sexton. So, Bearcats are forced into a punting situation. Blaylock back. Last time Sean Summers was in this uh, position, he took it all the way, 77 yards for a touchdown. You see having to hurry a man off the field. They had too many out there. Now everybody seems to be set. Sean Summers backed up to about his 22-yard line. Kicks away cleanly. He's going to field it. And this time... Well, he almost got away again, spinning. Finally, he's dropped by Mike Guzda. Let's go down on the sidelines now to Ted Hall. Ted? Bobby Condridge, here's a sign of how much respect the Tennessee coaches have for Cincinnati. Number 57, Brian Spivey, the center for Tennessee, was not supposed to play this morning. They decided that since it's going to rain, he had to come in. Spivey has an injured back. He said he didn't feel like playing. This game is so important to the Tennessee Volunteers. They stuck him out there. He says he feels fine right now, but he said, don't talk to me after I've been sitting around for a couple hours and letting my back tighten up. By the way, Mario Brunson got dinged up on a punt return. He says he's a little lightheaded right now. He'll be okay. Back up to you up top. Okay, thank you, Ted. The punt return by Sean a moment ago for a touchdown. The last one for the Vols was in uh, 91, and that was... Uh, Carl Pickens against Louisville. I was there. First game of the season. Yes, it was. Second down on the incompletion and 10 yards to go for Tennessee. And the uh, light rain starts to fall here with a minute 17 remaining in the third quarter of play. There's Schuler back looking, looking and finding nobody and finally goes down. Great defensive coverage by Cincinnati. There was nobody open. There were three receivers downfield. There were five people covered. One of the nose guards in there, number two nose guard, Barry Robinson, made the stop that time. I'll tell you what I see in the Cincinnati ball club. It's a bunch of kids who are not going to quit. I mean, they're down 28 to nothing. It'd be very easy to fold the tent. In fact, we saw a little bit of that last week. But this team is not doing that. They're still going to go out there and play hard and they're doing it every play and that's a great credit to their coaching staff and the university. Light rain beginning to fall at Nayland Stadium as Heath Schuler is going to be crushed. Can't find anyone and for the second play in a row he has dropped for a yardage lost. This one all the way back to about the 21 yard line. Big number 97 Gary Reed 6'3 270 pounder was in there and it forces Tennessee into a punting situation and will send Hutton back to about the five yard line. So Cincinnati will have a chance here for a good return or at least to get themselves in good field position. This will be the last play of the quarter if indeed they get it off and they're not going to. That's going to be the end of the quarter. Tennessee will be punting to start the fourth quarter of play. That's a pretty. We'll be back in a moment with the fourth quarter. Tennessee leading Cincinnati here in rainy Knoxville now by a score. As we start the fourth quarter, Hutton will be kicking and Condridge made a point during the time out there that uh, the wind will now be at the back of Hutton and it's uh, turned out to be a pretty brisk wind. I would say at least 15 to 18 miles an hour right now judging from the way the flags are blowing. So it might uh, have been a delay that was planned and if so it was a very good one by uh, Tennessee. But still Cincinnati has a chance to be in very good field position after this kick. Low snap from center, but Hutton gets it away. And away, and away, and away. All the way back to the 29-yard line. Ball string it out pretty good, and they will not permit much running room there. He gets it across the 35 to about the 37, where the Bearcats will put it in play. That punt covered 50 yards, and the return for about uh, seven yards. Let's go down to Ted. Ted? Bob, you got a uh, raincoat for me? My GQ suspenders are getting ready. It's starting to rain pretty hard down here on the field right now. Do you want to mention something about this Cincinnati offensive line? We've been bragging about them ourselves throughout the game, talking about how big and how tough they are. The Tennessee defensive line just told me this offensive line of Cincinnati is the best they have played against this year. Think about who they played against. Consider that, this Cincinnati offensive line, big and strong. Okay, great point. Tough it out down there, Ted. Hang in there. Here's Hart back to throw, looking, firing out in the flat, juggling catch, out of bounds, not quite a first down pickup of about eight yards, though. That's the tight end, Chris Bjornsson, who made the catch that time. 
tight ends have been very active today for Cincinnati. Remember, they came in here with a couple of key receivers out to Conridge, so it's changed their game plan, I'm sure, considerably. They sure did, especially with Marlon Pierce out. Uh, he was a leading receiver, and uh, he ran into a few disciplinary problems, and uh, Damon Bryant had a hairline fracture, and it just uh, probably altered their game plan quite a bit. They still hung in there and fought. It's a small and a small gain, if any. George Kidd, the linebacker on the left side, trailing and making the stop that time for the Volunteers. George Kidd is just an all-around good athlete. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 205 pounds. Give you a little bit of an idea of the weather conditions here in Knoxville on this homecoming day. A little fog and mist gathering. The rain very light. It's not a problem at the moment. Unless you're sitting in it, I guess. Here's Harp handing off to Small. Not much doing, but he's pretty close to a first down. I don't think he made it. I think he came up about a half yard short. Willie Richards, left defensive end, made the stop. Willie 6'3", 254, senior. Depends on where they spotted here, but I don't think it's quite a first down. Bring up an interesting call if it's not, Kondrich. It sure will. I, uh... Well, we'll just let it happen. We'll see. <laughs> Good idea. Not much we can do to change it one way or the other. They chains up to come in from all the way across the field. It looks like it's about a half a yard short. Probably the length of a football. Tight ends have had eight catches today. We talked about them being active. Eight catches for 84 yards from the two tight ends. And you saw the situation there. It is short. The two tight ends, by the way, are Bjornsson and Guzda, who've uh, been making those catches. And only one other player has had a catch today, and that was uh, for, covered about 30 yards. Well, Cincinnati trailing 28 to nothing with 13.49 to go, and a light rain falling has decided, I guess, not to take a chance. But Tennessee better be pretty careful in the middle there because uh, somebody could get a, a short snap. And we could have a fake here, I guess. Clock starts running at 1340 remaining in the contest. Snap high. But he's going to get his kick away, and it's a pretty decent kick. Sean Summers signals for and makes a fair catch at about the 16-yard uh, line. You notice how running one back just can't makes you kind of do that fair catch signal like you've been doing it all your life? <laughs> that looked a lot different than the first couple games when I used to see. It looked like he was scared to death sticking that armor there. Now it's just kind of uh, kind of waving at oh, the crowd. Oh, oh yeah, I'll just fair catch. <laughs> 32 yards on that punt. Third quarter stats there. Cincinnati 118, Tennessee 107 on the rush. Passing balls with the edge. Total yardage dead even. Again, you see the turnover situation, and the first downs are dead even after three quarters. Tennessee now with 13 minutes and 30 seconds and leading 28 to nothing. Crowd is hanging in here because they have seen a Cincinnati team that Conridge pointed out uh, a moment ago that it has not quit and gives no indication of quitting. So I, I think the fight is still in the Bearcat. Oh, it is. Jerry Coquit's in now, and... Uh... I think they're going to give him an opportunity to see what he can generate under these type of conditions. Thrown a couple of times as you saw him and completed a couple. And Aaron Hayden's in for the first time too. Well, that's good to see that uh, his injury is not that bad. Nebraska 45 to 24 over Arizona State, a final number 15 Corn Huskers who were beaten by Washington last uh, game out, back on the winning track. Colquitt's got the eye back. He gives it to the deep man in the eye, and uh, nice game. Hayden's uh, first rush of the ball game, Aaron Hayden. And uh, if he's banged up in any, any degree, Conridge, he didn't show it there. Well, I think he did show it there at the end of that run. Instead of doing what he normally does, cut back, getting upfield, he just kind of lowered his head and got out of bounds. Uh, if, you, if you'll take a look at the end of this run, that's not the Aaron Hayden that played uh, last week. I mean, he's uh, he would have cut that one back and tried to get extra yardage. Here's the handoff to him again. Juggled it for a second, but got through there. Now that looks like Aaron Hayden, doesn't it? That's, that's a little better. That's a little better. <laughs> As he crossed the 35-yard line, 
Dorian Adams, outside linebacker, 6'3", a 243-pound freshman made the stop. This is a great, nice block there, huh? Great little X block there by Bubba Miller. If you'll take a look, he's standing up, and uh, Spivey and himself just uh, X blocked, and it was a great execution. A big, good little hole. Not much going this time. I think Alston is in the ball game too now, or is he not? No, it is uh, Jeff Smith. It brings up now a second down. It really give him nothing on that one. So it's still about 10 yards to go. 12:46 remaining in the contest here in Knoxville as the Volunteers attempt to go 4-0 and on the season and take that record back into Southeastern Conference play at LSU next Saturday night. The Bearcats will be unless they can pull this one out 0-3 and, and head back home to take on Kent next week. They've got man coverage and here comes the blitz. Colloquy. Hands off. Read it nicely. Big hole. It's a foot race. Aaron Hayden caught from behind that time, but what a nice run. 47 yards by Aaron Hayden. Caught him in the blitz, and when you can get past the first wave, it's off to the races. Organic hole there. That's that's the way you draw it up. Well, they're in the orange zone here, and they have scored every time they've been in the orange zone this uh, season. Here's the handoff. Got a piece of the shoulder pad and drags him down this time. Aaron Hayden not able to break around that corner. He got a couple of yards, and that's about it. In the orange zone, Tennessee 16 times, 12 touchdowns and four field goals. That's being rather productive, uh, Condridge, when you get down into that area. That is, and what that that is the object of getting into the orange zone is to score. Aaron Hayden has some good numbers today. Four rushes, 67 yards. Not bad for guys injured. And there he goes again. This time he drags a tackler with him and gets across the 15 down to about the 12 yard line. Needs to get down to about the eight for a first down. 11.07 remaining in the contest here in Knoxville. Tennessee vaulted into the top ten in the nation, of course, after the impressive win over Florida last week. Right now they're impressively up 28 to nothing over Cincinnati and driving. Jerry Colquitt, no backs in this trip. He is indeed going to throw it, fires it over the middle, right into the hands of the receiver, and he could not hang on to it. Corey Fleming will not do that very often, but that time he did. And he had him six there. I think Mr. Fleming was thinking touchdown instead of securing the ball. But I tell you, Stoll, Miller, Spivey, Smith, and Gordon have done a great job of blowing people off the ball and making holes today. And that's something that we thought at the beginning that uh, would be almost not impossible but very tough to do and it, it has been broke but they've done a good job of keeping it at a steady pace and pass protecting. Allen will snap Wheaton will hold and Bexford will attempt to kick it'll be spotted down at the 21 be a 31 yard effort it is on the way and he remains perfect on the year. I believe that's number five five of five. And he has not missed an extra point. Very impressive kicking. Tennessee goes out front 31 to nothing with 10:36 remaining in the contest here.
balanced rushing for the Tennessee team. Hayden, who's seen the least action of any of the backs, 71, Phillips 50, Stewart 29, and Garner 18. No one this year has gone over the 100-yard mark as yet, so the scoring has been, uh, rushing has been very well balanced. And again, uh, through the end zone and no chance for return, and the Bearcats will put it in play. Let's take a look at that last scoring drive. Eight plays in it. Colquitt directing the action. Uh, 70 yards, and then the field goal. The drive took two minutes and 54 seconds off the clock. John Bexport with the field goal. The Bearcats down 31 to nothing. Tennessee getting to play a number of people here in the uh, second half. In fact, they got a number of people in in the uh, first half. They've been substituting rather freely all year, especially in the defensive line and secondary. Here's a little yardage up across the 30, enough for a first down, it appears. Uh, Fredell Kimbrough running out of tailback. Jeremy Spivey from linebacking position made the stop. Just a little down the line option. Pitch back and they're trying to secure the corner. They almost make it, but it's caught from the back by Jeremy Spivey. Jeremy Spivey is uh, out of Nashville, played at Brentwood Academy, the same uh, high school that uh, produced Bubba Miller. There's Hart back to throw, really being pressured and fires it into the turf. Just trying to get rid of it and avoid a huge loss as Tennessee was really swarming that time. Uh, I know Coach Major is happy to be inside here out of the uh, light rain that's falling in uh, Knoxville. And of course, a lot of fans uh, around the state were enjoying. I wouldn't want you to think he's relaxed, but he yeah. noticed he does not have his earphones on. Good news and uh, that he got back so soon. Third down conversion. Cincinnati is 3 of 11. And here is Hart handing off. A little bit short of a first down. Up to about the 39. He needs to move to about the 41. Jesse Sanders made the stop on Cradell Kimbrough. Number 24 running out of tailback. 5'11", 181. Penalty flag on the field. And the way Cincinnati is walking backwards. Jesse Sanders, uh, in our first game we did here, was slightly injured, uh, Condridge, and uh, hasn't seen much action since then, but it's good to see he's back. He's a he's a good athlete with a good future. After here. the play was over, Red personal shirt, foul right. against the offense. The down count, the third down after the 15-yard penalty. Wow. Tough break there, but you can't do that. There's Todd Helton, the true freshman from here in Knoxville. Quarterback who passed up the big baseball bonus to play football at Tennessee, and I guess we're going to see him the next time the Vols get their hands on the football. Right now it's third down, about 16 yards to go. Definite passing situation here. Tennessee converges on him in, uh, incomplete. Almost got Hart that time. Shane Bonham, I think, was the man putting the heavy pressure on him. The pass falls harmlessly to the turf. And so the Bearcats will have to punt, and Helton will get his shot at quarterback with nine minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the contest. A lot of youngsters out there getting to play. There's uh, Tim Murphy. We've seen uh, his Bearcats have a pretty, pretty tough day here, although they have not quit fighting. John Summers signals for the fair catch, and the balls will take it over in good field position at the 43-yard line. Too many men on the field, Tennessee. That one's coming back. Didn't get the substitution in time. Well, they're trying to get too many young people out there. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about Shane Bonham earlier. He, uh, he's got a pretty good work ethic, and he has a partner that works out with him pretty well, is Paul Yudkowsky, and I think that's because both of them are from cold places. One's from Alaska and one's from Winnipeg, Canada. So they know how to convert that snow into energy, I guess. But they really do work hard and they both play the same position. They've done a good job this year. The official, uh, as you see, is signaling for it to come back. At a substitution infraction against the receiving team, five-yard penalty with a repeat fourth down. There's the... Uh, There's the Paul Yudkowsky. And Shane's right behind him. Do they even stick together over there on the sideline? How about that? 
Yeah, yeah, Ted's probably, and he probably, I've got to translate it for Paul Yudkowsky because he's probably going, how you going, Ted, eh? And the man with the thinning hair over there is Toolshed. <laughs> oh, that's that. Bad choice on Cincinnati's part. Ball is out of the end zone safety. Well, it still was not enough after they took the penalty for the first down, but obviously you're going to try to kick it again. Uh, Cincinnati did make the right choice, try to kick it again and get Tennessee a little bit deeper. But here's what happened on that. That one was had no no chance of catching that one. It was just a bad snap and had a lot of velocity on it. I, and realistically, I'm surprised there haven't been more with the, the way that it's not so much the field's bad, but the turf is wet. And once you put press the ball down to snap it, you get a wet spot under the bottom and it has a tendency to shoot out of there pretty much and go high. And that's exactly what that was. Of course, fortunately for Cincinnati, it did go on through the end zone, so they wind up with only two points there giving up only two 33 to nothing Tennessee let's go down to Ted we saw talking with the balls on the sideline Ted yeah uh, they I told the guys Yakowski and, and Bonham that you were talking about them and talking about how they were working out all the time and he said they said which one of us is Hulk Hogan and which one is Adrian Adonis and they, <laughs> a couple of muscle houses over there they're having fun with it oh yeah there's big tell us who in his uh, fifth year at Tennessee has uh, had a great year. Did you see Helton give that little baseball kick? There's Georgia putting it on Ole Miss in the third quarter, 27 to 3. Georgia Bulldogs leading Michigan in the third quarter, 42 to nothing over Houston. Wolverines enjoying a obviously very productive offensive and defensive day. Of course, now after the safety, Cincinnati has to kick off, and Tennessee is going to field it about where they fielded the punt a moment ago. Down the sidelines, across to the 50-yard line is Mose Phillips into Cincinnati territory, where the Volunteers will take over. Number 19, Mose Phillips carrying at that time on the return. They spotted at about the 47-yard line at that point in Cincinnati territory. Volunteers will go into action with nine minutes and 15 seconds to go, leading 33 to nothing. I think Helton was just giving us a little prelim of his bullpen action, maybe during baseball season. Well, you know something about that baseball lingo, Condridge, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you too. Whoops, fumble. Uh oh. Slip ball, slippery ball, perhaps, and it got loose, and I think Colquitt did get on top of it. Condridge, uh, like Helton, uh, passed up a baseball career and uh, chose football. Any regrets, Condridge? Uh, yes. <laughs> if you look at Ryan Sandberg's salary, you do. Oh, that's just a missed snap right there. That uh, ball didn't get all the way back. Jason Lehman at center. Got a new center, I was going to say. We had a new center, and uh, that happens when you get a new guy coming in. Here's Colquitt standing up, firing out in the flat, complete. Tennessee receiver trying to get away and almost did over there on the side. That is Dwayne Freeman who makes his uh, second catch. There's Big Lehman who would switch from defense to offense only a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Leslie Ratliff also is in the ball game. He's got a bright future, it appears. Six foot seven, weighs almost 300 pounds. Lehman over the ball at center. One of the more highly recruited players out of high school when he came out his senior year. Everybody wanted him. Pass over the middle. Beautiful call. This could be six. No, they catch him at the 20-yard line. Nilo Sylvan, another true freshman out of Louisiana. 5'10", 170-pounder. Play went 20 yards. So Nilo Sylvan, who... Condridge is supposed to have about four or three speed, but uh, they had the angle on him here. They had the angle. He didn't get a chance to get turned up field, but that's a great little play. It's a, off of a run and shoot look. It's just an underneath screen, and then uh, it's very effective. Trey Peterson is also in there on the offensive line now as Tennessee comes on the left side this time with a carry from uh, James Stewart. Not much doing on that one. Clock running in Tennessee's favor, of course. 7.37 to go. It stops now. Ball's on top, 33 to nothing. Trying to ease up in the ratings. Another notch or two before they... Holding on the offense, 10 yards in the line of scrimmage. Now 
Oh, Ford told you holding. Oh, I think number 95 is getting <laughs> the old Hulk Hogan treatment. That was a little too flagrant right there. <laughs> Can't get away with that one when you hold your hands outside. Uh, Chris Altman, I think, just got one hand outside of the pad too much, and uh, that's too easy to see. Well, sometimes you get away with that. So well, uh, yeah. But <laughs> not often, though, no. when it's that flagrant. Here's Colquitt. Reverse. And the running room. The ball is loose. Tennessee picks it up. It gains even more yardage on it. Corey Fleming picked up Nilo Sylvan's fumble. Nilo Sylvan on the reverse as they try to use that 4-3 speed to get into the end zone. He dropped it, and uh, Corey Fleming was right there. Take a look, Conrich. It's a good job by Jerry Coke with ball handling right there. A lot of times on reverses, quarterbacks seem to give it away by showing the ball. Jerry Coquit did a great job of hiding the ball after the fake and waiting for the the reverse man to come to him instead of showing the play too early. Let's see if Tennessee keeps the orange zone productivity intact here as they are now first and goal just inside the 10 yard line. Not much there. In fact, they might wind up losing a half a yard. So it'll be second down. James Stewart jammed up in the middle that time as the Bearcats were waiting for number 33 to come crashing through and uh, they met him. Philip Fulmer now waiting for some play from Cutcliffe upstairs and let's see what they call on a second and goal at the 10. Ball just across the stripe but we'll call it the 10 yard line. Second down and goal there. They cannot pick up a first down so they got to get into the end zone or kick a field goal here. It's 33 to nothing. Tennessee on top with 6.16 to go. Call quick. Looks over the defense, rolls down the left side, wants the throw, fires about the three-yard line, complete. Rodney Ruth makes his first reception. There's a young man who stuck around here at Tennessee for a while, and finally in his senior year, Conrich, he got a scholarship this year. That's right, hard, hard work and persistence pays off every once in a while. <laughs> Rodney Ruth. They pull it back to about the four yard line, so it'll be third down and four to go at that time. And Tennessee wants to talk a little bit about it right here. Don't quit pulling away here, Condridge, and yes. uh, leaving That's, some footwear. Uh, Trey Patterson and. Uh, <laughs> They just they <laughs> haven't seen that in quite some time. One thing about being a quarterback, though, when you're running a counter option or a sprint out, you have to get your feet out of there. I mean, linemen shouldn't step back on you like that, but uh, that's one of the reasons why you have to get that little false step, get your foot out of the way. You're saying it's the quarterback's responsibility to deal with that. Huh? Well, he's, for the most part, yes. But uh, I would think also with, uh, with Jason being a new center, he probably had a few false steps himself. He probably got knocked back a little bit because he's not used to snapping the ball and having to step right now. So uh, I think it was a combination of the two. I'll give that one to Jason. I'd say it's his fault. Good <laughs> time to bring Jason in since Cincinnati uses a nose guard. You can uh, find out what it's really like down there at center. Here's the handoff to Mose Phillips. He's going to be close and fighting, and he is in for the touchdown. Late signal, but they gave it to him. Mose Phillips goes four yards for the touchdown. Take a look at it, Condridge. I think he got one real good solid block right there. Yes, he did. And I'm going to tell you, that's just uh, Trey Peters Pedersen. That's uh, continuously, continuous blocking. Just kept driving. See right there, driving, driving. Maybe a little help with the hold, but it uh, didn't get called. <laughs> and the last yard we have to give to Mose on his own. He got it on his own. He sure did. Back sports. Still perfect. And the ball's running out to 40 to nothing over the Bearcats. Tennessee in a runaway here for the Old Grats with six minutes remaining in the contest. Let's go down on the sidelines to Ted Hall. Ted? Dr. Ben Parker, you can be here to the 
Just about every place you look out here along the sidelines, there are cheerleaders because it's homecoming. So the alumni are here. Now, we're trying to say this as delicately as possible, but we think we found the oldest cheerleader out here. Now, wh when did you graduate? 1973. My first year was uh, 69. And you were named Miss Cheerleader USA. That's right. What's your name? Uh, Amy McLean Joyner. Amy, thank you very much. Show us you still have it. I've seen you doing your flips and stuff out here. Show us you still have it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I remember Amy. Tell her hello. <laughs> she was back there in my era. Look at that. Oh, great. wait, wait, wait. What are you guys doing? They're going to flip dead. Huh? Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Blade, oh, man. You guys catch me now. Well, let's hope the mic's still working. <laughs> I think uh, we answered that one. It's yeah, off. I think so. <laughs> Six minutes remaining in the contest. Tennessee able to play an awful lot of people here in the second half as they get ready for very, very tough schedule ahead. After LSU, they play Arkansas and Alabama back to back here. Then on the road at South Carolina at Memphis State, Kentucky here, and then wind it up at Vanderbilt. I Cincinnati's got Memphis State and uh, Kentucky too. I think Still Joe, on their schedule. Joey Chapman's worn his leg out. Uh, John Bechtel just kicked off. I guess they didn't want to <laughs> wear him out too much. He's kicked so many today. A little slow-mo on that. Oh, man, that is so nice. How about that? Way to go, Ted. Fear. <laughs> Fear. <laughs> One more time. Get Yatkowski and Bonham <laughs> over there to toss it. Get a little height on that pitch. <laughs> There you see Tennessee with a huge edge in rushing yardage uh, this half. 103 to 41 in favor of the balls. Aaron Hayden responsible for a great deal of that one. That's that. Cincinnati trailing 40 to nothing. Harp is back, tosses one out in the flat. Try to break somebody open out there and almost did. Pretty good yardage on that play as the Bearcats move it for a first down. Pass out of the uh, backfield to the tailback who had flared out in the flat, Joe Abrams. Just a little Seen drop the back there, yeah. and dump off to the swing back and uh, good blocking downfield. This almost was a big one. It moves the chains. It's first down and 10 to go with the ball spotted at the 35-yard line. Cincinnati's 35, Bearcats Trying to get something on the board, trying to prevent a shutout. They pass it out again in that same general area, a little further downfield this time, and it's complete to uh, Sean Stewart. Sean Summers on top of him, but it's again another first down for the Bearcats. Well, I heard that score. Miami has moved ahead of Arizona 8-7 to seven now. Hmm. But still some time left in that ball game. So that's an interesting score. I'm sure that Washington, number two in uh, some of the polls, are watching that one very closely because that might vault them to the top. Eye backs. Hand off to the deep man in the eye, Kimbrough. And he's up to midfield with the football before he is spun down. Fridell Kimbrough carrying the football that time for the Bearcats. And the stop was made by Scott Gallion. See some of the folks there who put the hoods up here because the light rain is still falling here. Nothing like the monsoon of last Saturday, but uh, still a light rain. And it sends a few people to the exits. And the score, no doubt, sends a few people to the exits. 40 to nothing balls. Harp wants to throw. Had a ball right in his face and uh, threw it away. And that ball was Shane Bonham. Shane Bonham got there with a the hands up that time, and the Harp had no chance for the completion. He just gunned it to the sidelines way over the head of everybody. There's Big Shane, number 92. Harp now on 8 of 15 for 71 yards. The stats on the starting quarterback. They have played two quarterbacks today. Paul Anderson did see considerable time also for the Bearcats. Tennessee is 16 and 0 and rushing over 200 yards. I believe today's game might make them 17 and 0, right? There's 
was a nice gain this time all the way down to the 32 yard line. Hey, there's one thing I'd like to say about the Cincinnati offense. They, what what happened with Penn State was no fluke. This is a good offensive team, and and they they're showing it today. I mean, they they haven't put a lot of points on the board, but when they're when they're operating properly, they can execute, and they're they're not a bunch of quitters, and they are tough up front. They well, got an offensive line. It's just got tough. to really admire them, Congress. They haven't given in at all. They're still fighting and clawing down there, even though this game, for all practical purposes, has been settled for a while they're still battling still trying to get into the end zone Tennessee trying to prevent the shutout or preserve the shutout and that's one way to do it Willie Richards Willie Richards roared in that time and dropped harp way back around the 40 yard line there he is big number 94 who is very very quick his speed sometimes almost uh, is too much Kendridge because occasionally he will overrun a play but I think my prediction from before the game will stand pat. There will be no Heisman poses. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so. They put it just uh, right at the 39-yard line. At that point, it becomes second down. About 16 yards to go for a first. 3.30 remaining. Hart wants to throw again. He's got him in his face, and again, he throws it away. Balls gave him no chance to set that time. They uh, put the big rush on. Shane Bonham was one of the men in there. Coach uh, Philip Fulmer, who retired his head coach with a perfect 3-0 and -oh mark. <laughs> Willie Richards, Shane Bonham. Everybody getting a piece of the quarterback. He's fair game right now because Tennessee knows he's going to be throwing. And they're coming after him. So it makes it third down. Long, long yardage to go for a first. 16, maybe 17 yards close to it for a first down now. Ball at the 39. Harp got a little bit of time, and then Tennessee converged on him at the last second, and again, he had to throw it into traffic. It was Jeremy Spivey who had the hand up that time. Jeremy Spivey, who's uh, actually not related to Brian Spivey. No. Teammates, but... Uh, He's getting a little action now as a backup to Reggie Ingram at middle linebacker. Cincinnati with 317 to go kind of throws in the towel as far as getting any more yardage. I believe I'd go on and go for it here if I were them, but uh, I'm not and they're going to punt. Punt is away and uh, Summers just backs out of there and lets it bounce. It's going to be fielded perhaps inside the five yard line. So Tennessee will start deep in their own territory just inside the five yard line but the balls control the ball game leading 40 to nothing you know Bob sometimes on a play like that you say well I would have gone for the more for the yardage or tried to score but you can tell a lot about a team when you're putting and you're down 40 to nothing if you're a good team and you still want to play football a lot of kids will run down on the punt and cover and the coach is probably looking at something like that saying hey we had to punt we're 40 to nothing behind and you're loafing you don't want to play but that time you saw they covered it well and got it down inside the five. So that's the type of thing they'll look at on a play like that. All right, Tennessee with the football. Colt put hands off to his tailback, who gets a couple of yards. Carrying is Mose Phillips. Mose a very valuable man. He can play fullback. He can play tailback. He started this game at tailback because Hayden Stewart and Garner were all... Uh, kind of bruised and battered from a week ago. All of the tailbacks have seen action today, so let me emphasize none of them are hurt that badly. They'll all be ready, I, I'm assuming, for LSU next week. But Mose has been uh, a workhorse today for the balls. He gets the call again, and he gets across the 10. Not enough for a first down, but he's up around the 12-yard line. Now, he gets up a little gingerly this time, Condridge. I believe he's uh, maybe got stepped on or something. He's having to come out of the uh, lineup right now, and uh, James Stewart will go in. Phillips today has carried the ball 10 times for 61 yards. A very productive day for most. But there goes another tailback who is bruised and battered. At the pro and ranks. the fullback is bruised up a little bit, too, with a slight head injury. Remember, Tennessee trying to dance around for the first down. James Stewart, and he did not make it. 
I have to look at that play objectively now because in the pro ranks, that's called it's a two minute drill. We're ahead 40 to nothing. I'm out of here. <laughs> I've got a little slight pull. Come on, somebody else come on in here and finish this out. I've got dinner plans tonight, yes. right? <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay, Tennessee will be forced to turn it over now. Give it up with a fourth and two situation. So Hutton will go back and stand in his end zone and punt it away with a minute and 20 remaining in the contest. So Cincinnati will get one more crack at the big orange end zone. He gets the kick away. It's a nice one, and it's going to be fielded and dropped, and then the receiver is dropped big time. Tennessee all over at Willie Richards downfield that time. First of all, the punt covered 38 yards. The return, a painful two yards. And then Willie Richards, first and ten, fair count. Forty-two yard average on the day for Hutton. Maybe that's about a yard or so above his average coming in, but a very effective day. Had a couple of 50-yard uh, hits today. Here's Harp back to throw, swings it out to his tailback in the flat, and pretty good yardage. Almost broke it all the way. Joe Abrams coming out of the backfield that time, that little swing pattern, which they have run pretty effectively. Tim Frost made the stop. There's Coach Majors. He has left the press box and moved down on the sidelines and uh, obviously very happy. That play, by the way, the last one went for 16 yards. 46 seconds to go. Crowd urging the ball defense to preserve the shutout. Cincinnati hoping to get something on the board here. Harp back, looking, firing, incomplete. Overshot his receiver on the sidelines. Tennessee doesn't have much time to enjoy this one just tonight and you've got to start looking at film and thinking about going down to the Tiger Den very that, that too is called Death Valley like the one over at Clemson Conrad. very hostile place you, very nice. you've been there haven't you I was there and it wasn't pretty <laughs> the Tiger greeted you didn't they? yes they did but Tennessee will take a very talented football team down to Baton Rouge you can Rest assured of that. Here's Harp back to throw. Firing complete out in the flat and dropped after a gain of uh, five or six yards. And the clock still runs with 21 seconds to go. That pass was completed to Sean Stewart. Wide receiver who has seen limited action today. I believe that's his second catch. This will be the final play of the ball game. He's going to have to hurry to get it off. Four seconds. Three, two, one. He barely got it off, and it's out to Kimbrough. A little swing pass out on the side. He's going to be dropped, and Tennessee's shutout has been preserved. Big win, impressive win for the Tennessee Volunteers over a battling, scrapping Bearcat team from Cincinnati. The Volunteers roll by a score of 40 to nothing. Condridge, they scored about every way you can score today. Uh, through the air, on the ground, a safety, field goals. Uh, I would think that Johnny Majors, Phil Fulmer, Larry Marmy, all the people are very pleased. I think they would be too. I just, uh, it was an overall great effort. All right, let's go down to Ted Hall, who has Coach Majors. Ted? Thank you very much, Bill. It's Coach, your impressions of the game, first of all. Well, the most important thing, I think, about the whole game was it. We didn't turn the ball over, and that's always very positive. I think the Cincinnati is a rather strong football team on defense. Uh, they moved the ball almost at times. In fact, the, the statistics at halftime were exactly even in total offense, but our turnovers, we had none, and they had two at halftime. They were patient. They used up the clock trying to keep the game closely, uh, close. It was close the first half. I think continued plotting and patience paid off, and I think it was a completely well earned and well well played football game we weren't perfect we got their quarterback a few times overall i was very pleased with this new coaching situation for you being up top in the press box how much input did you get into the game well the main thing this is a team game team effort you can't play without 11 people in every play you can't coach without everybody pulling together i've always tried my best not to mess things up 
our coaching staff and our team is doing a very good job. What else you got? What is it tough up there? <laughs> not, not when we're leading, but it's, uh, it's the clock ticks pretty slowly at times when you just zero to zero and seven to nothing and 14 to nothing. Coach, we'll let you get out of the ring. Thank you very okay. much. Hope you're feeling better real soon. I love that. He lets you know when the interview's done, doesn't he? Back up to you guys.